So I don't watch either of them. I have no, uh, I'm not on either side, just for the record. Like, I don't care about either of them. I just think it's interesting observing it. Why do they both feel like they have the moral high ground? Like, I know why Sniper Wolf does, because she's delusional. But why does Jack think he has the moral high ground here? He lets the video play for another 45 seconds before eventually adding his second comment. I, like, I wow, 45 seconds. This is literally what people came for XQC for. They're like, he goes 40 seconds without commenting. Oh my God, are you insane? This is what I'm saying. What do you mean he went 40 seconds without commenting? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Guys, there's a whole part of the internet that's like, he hasn't talked for a minute. And I'm like, yeah, he's watching. Finster reacted my video, didn't finish it commented got distracted what am i supposed to do finster reacted to my video and i'm so upset no how fun i hope finster is doing great i love him and i'm glad that he watched a part of my video i hope it impacted him positively or neutrally i want people to react to my content i want people to show my clips around the internet i want hassan piker to react to one of my videos and walk away for 10 minutes i want xqc to not comment on my videos for 10 minutes at a time for Brittany simon to get actually one of her thoughts out I would love that if people would watch my videos without interruption, that'd be fire. But I'm not gonna have that world if you make all these rules, right? Which is fair because in your world, well, you want this and you want it to be fair use and you want, fine. We should change fair use to include making facial expressions. We should make fair use, meaning you just have to have your face in the screen. That's what I would like to see. Like if you don't like it, that's fine but it's all subjective, okay? It's even right at the top of his description, so you don't have to click show more to see it. Good stuff. Link to the original video is in the description if you just wanna see some random shit. I don't know why I'd want to click it, because you've already shown me literally all of it. See, that's the bullshit part. Why would I wanna click it when you've just shown me the whole video? Say, this is why I say they're lying. I'm so good. I'm so good at my job. You're all idiots. I'm so good at my job. The haters are idiots, listen. Why would I want to click on this video when you've already showed me the whole video? I don't know, for more content? Ah, but admit it. Why would I want to click on this video if you already showed it to me? You also don't care about getting more content from the content creator. The point is not to watch the video you just watched. The point is you saying, oh, wait, maybe I like this content creator. I'll watch more of their videos. But you just said it out loud. This bitch just said it out loud. He's not going to do it. He's not gonna do it. Did you hear him self-report, bros? Let's watch it again. Wanna see some random shit? I don't know why I'd want to click it because you've already shown me literally all of it, but at least it's there. By reposting- Exactly. I'm so good at my job, bros. I'm sorry, I'm so good at my job. Did you not hear this self-report? Why? So they linked it, gave credit to the original person, shouted it out in the video. Why would I wanna watch it? I already watched it through you. Um, ma'am, so they could watch more of your content. Oh, but they're not interested in more of your content because the reason they're watching, well, what's his name? Jinx is because they want to watch a Jinx. They don't want to watch you. That's what I'm trying to explain to people. If people are not interested in your videos, they will not click on the link, even if it's in the description. This guy doing the video complaining just proved my point. He is not interested in more of the content. That's the point. So today I want to talk about the Sniper Wolf versus Jack's films, but I want to talk about it from the bubble perspective and of course through an introspective lens and remember that we don't know these people, but they're real people and they have real lives on the internet. So this is just an observation that I am making, an observation we are going to discuss. If you guys have not been following the controversy, let's watch a couple Philip DeFranco episodes just so you guys are kind of caught up and then I'll explain whatever he doesn't. Starting with this sniper wolf situation is disgusting, it is reckless, it is dangerous, and we have to talk about it. Right, and if you don't know, Sniper Wolf is an absolutely massive YouTuber. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of views each month. She's best known for her cosplay and her React content, and that specific content has gotten a lot of heat over Ooh, the last few months. Nice. With a lot of people saying the React content, it, it's not transformative. She's just stealing and siphoning content from other people and benefiting from and among her many critics, one of her biggest ones is a creator by the name of Jack's Film. He's an old school YouTuber. I think he's been on the platform for like 17 years. And over the past few months, he's really highlighted this problem. And with that, he's made a ton of videos criticizing Sniper Wolf for her reaction videos, both making fun of her, but also at the same time giving credit to the content that she is reacting to. But then over the weekend, it escalated from just some internet thing to the real world. With her posting an Instagram story with a poll saying, should I visit Jack's Films? He lives five minutes away from my shoot. And as it turns out, she wasn't joking because she ended up posting from outside his house saying, let's talk like a 
adults Jack's films and in that showing the exterior of his home. But of course, in this video, we have it blurred out because we're not psychopaths. Now she ended up deleting those posts after getting backlash, but Jack's films went to Twitter to write, Sniperwolf just docks me on her Instagram. Creepy, gross, violating. What you do is disgusting. You steal content and stalk YouTubers. YouTube demonetizes dangerous, quote, creator or just get her off your platform. She posted an Instagram story right outside her home and deleted it. In what universe do you think that's okay? In what reality do you live in where you think this behavior is justified? She's no longer a, quote, silly creator that steals content, tee -hee. She's a creep that stalks and threatens her critics. Nah, fuck that. Time to get her off YouTube. But then Sniper Wolf shot back at a handful of posts on her Instagram story, saying his claims are defamation and she doesn't know how to dox. And adding, he literally posted his address on Google and said, I threatened him and doxed him. And adding, this creep has been harassing me for months, then plays victim saying, I threatened him when I just wanted to talk to him. I have no ill intentions. She also posted a video saying, This guy's entire channel is just me, me, me. Every single video for the past few months has been about me. And it's just like on me. And then his streams. This dude is just like low-key harassing me. Like, should I get a restraining order? Jack then replying to all this and saying she ends with, should I get a restraining order? Well, one of us showed up to the other's house tonight and it wasn't me. And saying the harassing you claim I've been doing is documenting recent examples of you stealing creators' content, stealing jokes, and failing to provide transformative commentary. Obviously, it struck a nerve, but wow, doxing me was not on my bingo card. There is no reality where you're in the right here. And then regarding the claims that she doesn't even know how to dox, he said, you posted a video tonight of you outside our home for your 5 million plus followers to see. While my wife and I were in I can't make it any simpler than that. If that's not doxing, why did you delete it? And all this has unsurprisingly spawned tons of responses online. A few defending her, but largely it seems like people are on Jack's side. And saying things like, her saying I found his address on Google was nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to tell her audience, here's where you can find the information. Sniper Wolf is going to get somebody hurt. As well as, I don't care if you're a fan of Sniper Wolf or not, Jack did not deserve to be doxed over what amounts to YouTube drama. Fuck out of here, man. And personally, my opinion here, I used the words in the beginning. I think this is disgusting, it is dangerous, and it is reckless. This is just something you do not do. This crosses a line. In my opinion, when she says there was no ill intent, I just wanted to talk, that sounds like bullshit to me. Or you just want to talk? DM. You posted all this, including the front of his home publicly. At the very least, this was an intimidation mm. tactic. At the very worst, you were hoping that something escalates. And her posting after all the big reactions to her story, like joking about the incident, saying we show up to your house, what do you do? I feel like that's- Okay, by the way, I am not pausing or talking much because I feel like Phil has to give us the rundown and then we'll get into it. So I've linked his video once again. I just wanna say that out loud because I'm just like sitting here, but I am also like recontextualizing the situation in my own head, but we're almost done. Shows she really doesn't understand what she did was fucked up. Also that she likely doesn't expect <laughs> to be held accountable, which is a big aspect of the story because not only did Jack and others online say she needs to be deplatformed, but that was something that Jack reiterated in a video that he uploaded to YouTube. But here's the thing, and YouTube, feel free to prove me wrong. I am 99.5% sure YouTube's not gonna do a fucking thing. And as far as why, it's because she's one of their golden creators. She was even their keynote speaker at VidCon and they were gushing about her on Twitter. And the truth is, this has gotten to such a point, they can't claim, oh, we didn't see it. And so understand, if there is, as I expect, a lack of an action, hmm. that is an action. When you don't send a message, that is a message. And unfortunately, the one that YouTube may be sending here is a dangerous one. But hey, uh, that is the story, some of my personal- Okay, so there's one more video from Phil, okay, just with another update. And then I want to get into it, and basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also link these videos. No, not much to discuss. Sniper Wolf was in the wrong, which is why she deleted the post, but we'll see. Um, if So much to discuss. So much to discuss. If you're only reacting to the end of the story and not what even created the situation in the first place, I feel like we're not being honest about the story. Starting with, y'all, people are pissed off at YouTube right now. I mean, not mm -hmm. that they actually care unless it affects ad dollars, but people are pissed. Right? Earlier this week, we talked about that whole doxing scandal with creator Sniper Wolf and Jack's films. With her posting an Instagram story where she showed up to his home, revealing his house, all her followers in the process, obviously a major privacy and safety violation. And her doing this after Jack's films had made a ton of videos criticizing Sniper Wolf's reaction videos because many in the community believe she's just really stealing and siphoning content more than really transformatively reacting. And so yeah, he's been poking fun at her, but also trying to call attention to the- Okay, see, I get a little nervous. Am I doing that right now by not talking? Like, I get a little nervous about what game we're playing, uh, like, on the internet, because am I supposed to be talking right now to make it transformative? Because again, like, I want to hear the facts before, because like, I think I take my reactions maybe a little bit more- you know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure of what the rule is because am I doing the same thing Sniper Wolf was doing? I'm just confused. Even um, XQC was criticized for the same thing, 
But I watch XQC and yeah, like how many times is he supposed to interrupt the stream before he can form an opinion? Like in my brain, I'm like listening and I'm thinking and I'm like, okay. And then I'm thinking about how to react, but I'm, am I supposed to be being like, am I supposed to be making noises? What is the expectation of the behavior? Am I supposed to be doing something other than listening so I can form a real opinion? Am I supposed to be, is that why people play games? So it's like transforming the content more. I just, I'm not sure what people are upset about. And so I feel a little strange myself. Like, am I going to get in trouble because I'm not talking right now and I'm just listening and processing to make sure that I'm forming a good opinion? Like, what is the expectation, right? Credit small creators deserve in works like this. And Sniper Wolf has obviously not been a fan of that, equating those to harassment. But what appears to be an overwhelming majority don't agree with that, and they've taken Jack's film side, arguing that not only what she did was wrong and reckless, but that YouTube needs to step in and either demonetize or flat out ban her for doxing another YouTuber. But as your resident critic Philip DeFranco predicted, uh, YouTube <laughs> has done nothing. And so many have accused YouTube of favoritism, thinking that they're just letting her get away with this because she's such a massive creator. But some also saying that YouTube has just been plainly tone deaf amid this. So is this before she got demonetized? Because she got demonetized this weekend and this in part because yesterday the main youtube twitter account tweeted would it be too meta to do a reaction video to a reaction video and mind you this whole situation started because of reaction videos to reaction videos at the core of this situation is about commentary and critique and what is fair and square to do in these reaction videos which is why i decided to uh, poke the bear a little bit yesterday responding to that in a tweet that kind of blew up saying just as a silly silly funny goof y'all should react to this video which i should let you know is the second but they know like why are content creators thinking they're getting one up on youtube like youtube knows that's what I mean. Why is Phil DeFranco playing a game with YouTube as if YouTube doesn't know what's going on with one, with one of their biggest creators? It feels weird, right? Like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to gather from that. Like, YouTube is a multi-billion dollar business. They know what they're doing. Why are you... What is happening? Like, I don't get it, right? Like, what is the... We're, what is the... We're so smart. Look at us being... Like, why is everyone taking some moral high ground here, right? Like, I'm a little confused on that front, but let's keep tweet going. tweet that I thought of. The first was that I was going to quote tweet when they said, check in on yourself, check in on your friends. And I was just going to say, not like that, Sniper Wolf. But I do want to say, like, I have no ill intent to whoever is running the, the YouTube Twitter account. I know there's probably, like, just one or two people trying to do their job disconnected from any sort of enforcement. I mean, it is still incredibly tone deaf and stupid. And you, if you had scheduled tweets, uh, you should have really checked them. But I don't uh, agree with people that were saying, like, whoever runs their Twitter account is just taunting us at this point. Or, like, who's ever in charge of enforcing the policies on YouTube? They're, they're not also running the Twitter. But by maybe virally dunking on Twitter, mm. those people become aware. And actually on that note- Okay, so he just said it. You guys are saying, I think they're trying to put pressure on YouTube to take better action and not brush it under the rug. I think the game he's playing with YouTube is leveraging the emotions of the audience to pressure them to act. Okay, that makes sense. You have others out there saying the community needs to really ramp up the pressure campaign and force YouTube to act. Writing things like, do not stop spamming them and telling them to take action against Sniper Wolf. They are blatantly ignoring handling the situation properly and are waiting for it to die down. Don't let it die down. Don't stop holding them accountable. If Sniper Wolf gets away with this, that tells other creators that you can dox and endanger people so long as you make YouTube enough money. It's blatant favoritism and it's disgusting. And for his but it's so normal. Like, if I understand the world wants to change things, and I agree with you, but I actually think it starts with figuring out why you think you have the moral high ground. And remember that Jack, for all intents and purposes, did harass Sniper Wolf the last few months with making that second channel, in my opinion. Because, again, like, you want to talk about obsessed, like, super inappropriate, according to my values. Like, I don't think I could be that obsessed over somebody who's just doing her job based off of, like, the the loopholes on her own platform, right? Like, I don't know why you're mad that somebody in the company is getting favoritism when like, that's how it works. So again, I have a lot to say about this, but we'll get into it. His part, Jax Films has also posted about this situation earlier in the week, writing, YouTube, the best time to remove Sniper Wolf from your platform was Friday night when she showed up to our home, filmed and posted a live video of our house to her 5 million plus Instagram followers while my wife and I were inside and dared me to come out. The second best time is now. I've sent video evidence to the appropriate channels and I'm happy to share directly with you. This is a clear example of doxing and a clear violation of your policy stated here. But again, and people can call me a cynic, I think that unless some sort of charges are filed or anything like that, YouTube's not going to do a fucking thing. And that is. And I think they're in California though, right? So doxing is illegal in Cali. So technically they could press charges and they probably should. Like I, for the record, think it's very unethical, immoral, scary for anyone to show up to anyone's house. So I think Sniper Wolf should be absolutely like in trouble somehow, 
right? So not accept like not acceptable. Doxing is not acceptable. P.S. Like just like I want to make that clear from my stance. I would be very upset if somebody showed up to my house and took a picture of my apartment and said like, oh my gosh, like this, you know, come outside. We'll fight. Like don't show up to people's houses, period. Like whoever, like Sniper Wolf's brain obviously like malfunctioned in a really serious way when she was driving to this man's neighborhood. She should have been like, what am I doing? And turned around. So in no way, shape or form am I condoning what Sniper Wolf did. And she obviously needs repercussions. But if she had never done this, like if she had never doxed him, Up until this point, I don't think Sniper Wolf was the bad guy in the story. And I think Jack's film turned into this really weird villain that I don't understand personally from my value. So that's why I want to talk to you guys about it. Because prior to her going to his home, which is not okay and she should be in trouble for it. I never saw, I never had a problem with Sniper Wolf in the same way I don't have a problem with XQC. In the same way that I don't have a problem with anyone who's reacting to any content. Like I don't think this is really I don't think what she was doing was villainous prior but I think that there was a lot of jealousy involved or a lot of envy involved and she's like a really easy target so for me prior to the doxing I don't understand why everyone had an issue with Sniper Wolf and I'll get into it with you guys because again I think this is really interesting and same with XQC like I have no issue with either of them personally as like an adult as a 34 year old I have no problem with how they do content I think it makes sense for their bubble so I they're not in competition with me so I don't care but even if they were like no one's in competition but me with me but me right so I'm not upset about it but I'll show you why I think Jack was kind of insane in my opinion. Like he made me feel really unsafe as a content creator. And I don't know if he understands like from my perspective, like he's dangerous because he's obsessive about an actual human being who's real. If he was upset with how YouTube allowed her to exist, he should have gone after YouTube. Why is he going after a woman who's just like minding her business, right? Really weird. But we'll get into it, okay? And it's not about gender. It's about content creator to content creator. And like, who's really in charge here? It's YouTube, right? They're the ones who are allowing her to get away with it. And like, whether or not you don't like that, you should go after YouTube. Not Sniper Wolf, right? It doesn't make sense. But anyways, let's let's finish this video and we'll really get into it. Understand this is just my opinion. I don't believe that they enforce their policies evenly. A part of that is often logistical. There's just so many fucking channels and so many things are happening. Though here, that's obviously not the case. This is too high profile for that to be like, oh, it got lost in the shuffle. And secondly, it is my belief that if this was not Sniper Wolf and this was someone that maybe was more on the, uh, the outs, with YouTube, right? Someone who was not their keynote speaker. And at the very least, I think they would take some sort of action. Also, I will say with this, I've, I've been hit up by people saying, hey, have you asked your YouTube contact about this? There's really no fucking point. I've been handed off so many times at this point, I feel like a, a problem child. Also, the, the reasoning there could be anything. It could just be they have other things to work on, but it also could be, you know, as part of this gig, you raise awareness on topics like what we're talking about here, class actions against their parent company. But personally, whenever I can, I try to assume that there's not like a ill intent. So yeah, that's why uh, my opinion on this is it's completely fucked up situation around sniper wolf but i don't think that youtube's gonna do anything but i guess also with that i'll pass the question off to you what are your thoughts here on the whole situation and do you think okay so for the record as of now she's now her main channel has been demonetized temporarily only so the action youtube ended up taking was demonetizing her for the doxing now i want to show you this was jack's reaction to sniper wolf showing up to his home last night sniper wolf a massive youtuber showed up outside of our home, recorded a video of our home, and then posted it to her 5.6 million Instagram followers, goading me with the line, let's talk like adults. In my 17 years on YouTube, I've never once had someone come to my home and vaguely threaten me. Sniper Wolf needs to be deplatformed. I love that he didn't pick up the laundry in the corner of this video before he filmed. In this exact moment, she turned from a mere content thief to someone who doxes and stalks her critics. To everyone that's reached out to us, thank you. We're fine. We're just a little shaken up. But mainly, we feel violated. We no longer feel safe in our own home because we're dealing with someone who genuinely thinks they're in the right for A, stalking me, and B... It's not really a stalking. I think that's the wrong word to use there. Posting our home to her that's true massive audience stalking is the more of a legal way to phrase it she's not stalking you any more than you were stalking her she found your public address online because apparently he had posted it on google 
So like imagine if Jake Paul or like Logan did this or like fans of parents who show up at YouTubers homes. They're not stalkers. They're like inappropriately processing information. A stalker is a real phenomenon that's very specific. It's an obsessed person focusing on one individual or multiple and like goes beyond appropriate measures at every turn to get closer to said person, right? So I just want to be very clear because as somebody who's gone to court over a person who's become obsessed, like it's very specific and it's it's not exactly the same as a YouTuber going to your house to make clout and like views or even though it's inappropriate, even though I agree that like parents shouldn't be driving their kids to people's homes, I 100% agree with you, but I wouldn't call those parents stalkers. I would call them incredibly inappropriate and I would like make it clear that this is not okay behavior, but I'm not sure that it's literally a stalker and I'm, I, you know what I mean? Especially since he's been so obsessed with her. It sounds really weird to be like, oh, this you like she probably thought it was so fucking funny, but it's not funny because it is kind of unnerving and I agree she should be punished. But calling her a stalker is like it feels fake, right? Because that's not what it's happening in the same way that I thought it was weird that Charlie and Sneeko, when they were having their clout battle, people were like Sneeko's threatening Charlie. Sneeko's not threatening Charlie. It would be bad for business to actually threaten Charlie's life. They're just doing their clout battle, right? This is a clout battle. And no matter how much Jack wants to pretend he has the moral high ground, he's in this for clout. But he's upset Sniper Wolf is so popular and his channel is failing. His literal original argument about Sniper Wolf was that original content creators who are making content are not getting the same views as reaction channels. And Sniper Wolf is like his main target. So again, this is about he doesn't he's envious that somebody else is bigger than him. And that is the problem that I'm seeing in this story is like, why does he think he has the moral high ground when it's still about numbers for him? And uh, P.S. He has four, almost five million subscribers on his main channel. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not even a small YouTube creator. He's making more money than any of us. And I'm happy as a middle class YouTuber. I love my job. I'm so grateful. I would never complain. But the fact that a guy with 5 million subscribers is actually able to complain about his viewership numbers is like so uncomfortable to me as like, why do you, what are you complaining about, dude? What a disgusting abuse of clout that is. This is I agree irresponsible with that. at best and flat out dangerous at worst. YouTube needs to step in and take action. If this goes unpunished, then it sets a terrifying precedent that you can dox and stalk your critics so long as you have a big YouTube audience. Well, I think dox your critics is really what she did here. If she truly wanted to talk with me, she could have done so through many other means. But there's one thing you don't do. You do not show up at someone's house. Agree. 100%. That's simply a line you do not cross. 100% agree. There is zero justification for this. She claims in her story that I've been harassing her. No, Sniper Wolf. I do agree with that. I do think what he's been doing is harassment personally. I've not been harassing you at all. In my videos. I I'll show you the videos he does. But in my opinion, in my value system, I couldn't do what he's doing and not feel like I'm harassing someone. In Judge of Jack's films, I've been critiquing her non-transformative commentary. I, I just disagree that's not transformative. Point out cases of content theft and freebooting, and I credit the creators she steals from. I've been critical of her content, but that does not equate to harassment. What is harassment is coming to our home, sharing it for millions to see, and taunting me to come out. You remember when um, Jeremy... Uh, quartering who I smoked weed with before a great time um do you remember when he made like a billion videos about the wonder not the marvel miss marvel and h3h3 was like he's obsessed he's basically stalking her like it got so bad that he got banned from uh, i think i can't remember what it was but he got in trouble for it like he got in trouble because he was making so much content at her at once at some point it became like abusive right obsessive it was really weird and so there's something to be said about 
content creators and when they focus their content on a very specific person, after some time, it's just like, okay, what are we doing? Like if you're upset with Snapper Wolf getting away with things, why aren't you going after YouTube? Why are you going after a person, like a content creator? It's just like a very weird thing to do in my opinion. YouTube needs to take swift action and ban her from the platform ASAP. And the same goes for Instagram. Speaking of, Sniper Wolf is already making light of the situation, as if stalking someone is a quirky thing to do. No one should feel unsafe in their own home. Okay, doxing someone is something no one should do, right? In this situation, she's not stalking you, she's doxing you. And thanks to Sniper Wolf, my wife and I now do. So YouTube, please do the right thing and get her off the platform. Anyone who weaponizes their fan base like she did does not deserve a space here. Okay. So, um, and obviously I'm going to go through it, my reasoning. And so I think I'm not a fan of Jax or Sniper Wolf personally. I used to watch Sniper Wolf back in the day, but like lost interest because her content's not that interesting, obviously. And then I'm not a fan of Jack, never have been. I don't, I don't play in that side of YouTube. They're not like, they're too normie for me. Like I just, there's no connection there. Right. And so I don't watch either of them. I have no, uh, I'm not on either side, just for the record. Like, I don't care about either of them. I just think it's interesting observing it. Why do they both feel like they have the moral high ground? Like, I know why Sniper Wolf does, because she's delusional. But why does Jack think he has the moral high ground here? So as you guys know, okay, hold on. Let's see. What is, what was Jack's, where's Jack's original video about sniper wolf that kind of like started this whole thing okay he has five million subbies and he gets good views i mean he always gets like two hundred thousand. okay seventy five thousand ninety two thousand a hundred thousand nine hundred thousand two hundred thousand um two hundred thousand three hundred thousand so he gets i mean he gets fine views oh here's sniper wolf 11 months ago what the fuck so I recently stumbled across an entry on Know Your Meme that read, Sissa Sniper Wolf spends millions on new mansion. For those who don't know, Sissa Sniper Wolf is a YouTuber who reacts to TikToks. I promise it's way cooler than it sounds. Take a look. So this b at the store wanna be petty, right? How do you deal with a Karen? So this whole at the store wanna be petty. Oh, he got time. Epic, right? Well, this news kind of inspired me. I don't get it. See, so is that not enough? Done... Like, is he mocking her in that moment saying that's not enough of a reaction? Like, what else does he want her to say? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, what else is she responsible to say? Fun is I've created a brand new YouTube channel called Judge Jack's Films. And so far, I've only uploaded one video titled TikToks that gave me a tummy ache. Here's a little snippet. Your mom a ho. Oh, it says your mom a ho. Oh, that's not very, that's not very nice. This is giving me a tummy ache. Now I'm gonna try and upload. See, what is he doing? Like, what else does she have to do? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what else? When you're making certain kinds of content, again, I'm not the audience member. You're not the audience member. But what is she doing that's pissing people off? I don't get it. Like, I don't get it like I don't understand like why isn't that enough of a reaction like reaction videos to me is like you're spending time with a friend so if I was in I think this is what I'm thinking is like when I would watch Ray William Johnson react or I watched Sniper Wolf like wouldn't you just like oh yeah like what do you get what I'm saying I'm not sure what am I missing I feel like everyone is seeing something I don't get what does it matter if that's her only commentary so like what does it matter daily on Judge of Jack's films so make sure you go to that channel and subscribe link okay she's not crediting other content creators now question I understand that part if she fixed that part would it be enough right because like if she fixed that part and I agree with you she should be crediting content creators which by the way even I have a hard time doing that um because when you're watching like content like I do you don't always remember to take down the link for every TikTok you watch. Like if you watch 30 TikToks in a stream, you don't think about it. I actually had to tell myself, like, make sure you take down the, like right now I've got a document where I have to click every video I click on. I've been saving the links to post in the description. It's a fucking, it's such a pain in the ass. So I'm not going to lie from a Britney perspective, from a neurodivergent, I'm tired just doing this. Like this is, makes me want to not stream. I understand. But it's also very important that we do it so the content creators can get their original link showed. So I'm all about it. But it is a pain in the ass, okay? I just need to say that. Like it is a pain in the ass. But okay, 
all the videos you see on TikTok aren't even the original posters, by the way. Like I was watching Reddit posts and they weren't the original posters. Am I supposed to go find the original, original poster or do I just use the same video I reacted to? Does that make sense? So you know how TikTok, most of it is stolen content because that's TikTok that's reposting. Do I, if I watch the reposted link, am I supposed to do the work of going and finding the original content creator or do I just use the link that I saw? What is my moral obligation here? I want to know in the description below and please help me get a mansion too okay thank you drive safe how do you not have a mansion you're worth money so again i want to know like what is my obligation too because i'm confused about the rules like what are the rules here and again i'm not on sides here i'm just confused about our moral obligation okay so then so we just watched that one. Okay, so now see, okay, I'm linking you guys the video so you guys can see it. So Jack doesn't think I'm stealing his content, literally not. And Hassan has gone, sorry, I just saw the link in my Discord chat. Hassan also gets this criticism for eating food and not talking, I don't care. Literally don't care because when I watch streamers, I actually think some people talk too much. Like, you know what I mean? I can just hear them making noises in the background, which I love by the way. But um, Hassan gets the same criticism. In November of 2020, I posted a 14 minute YouTube video in which I roast a weird house. It was when I first released it, one of my worst performing videos. Okay, we might watch this one too. Here, I'll link it now that I've shown it on stream. I'm linking it in the chats. Um, thank you Discord for sharing that. And now I got to, okay, now I showed it for a second. So I'm going to put it in my Google doc to put in the description of my video after. Maybe we watch it, maybe we won't, but now that I've shown it, I'm just gonna do that so I don't get in trouble. Okay. Let's do this. This is called Let's Talk About Sniper Wolf and this was two months ago. One last time. This is his main channel and then we'll go to the fake channel that he created. This is Sniper Wolf. She's a YouTuber with over 30 million. Wait, nah, it's when he leaves stream while letting a video play. Exact. why not? Guys, listen to me when I say this. Am I dumb? If I'm a small content creator and Hassan left my video playing for 10 minutes without commenting or XQC, thank you. And whether or not that brings me views, who fucking cares, right? Like, I don't get it. Like, what am I missing? What am I missing, right? Like, if XQC played one of my videos for the whole video, if he played my whole video, on his stream and never said a word or walked out of the room, what is the disadvantage for me as a content creator? I'm not seeing it. I think I believe in the Mr. Beast method, which Mr. Beast always says like, take my videos, repost them, make whole channels dedicated to me, do everything. I feel like I'm a Mr. Beast camp where I'm like, yeah, take my videos and post them. Like there are people right now, YouTube tells me like, Brittany, people reposted your videos. Like, I don't care. Like it gets my face out there. People eventually recognize me. They'll be like, hey, who's this fucking bitch? Like whether they like me or not, as long as you're not taking every single, like as long as you're not pretending to be me, I don't care. So as long as you're not like literally pretending to be Brittany, like I don't care. Or as long as you don't take my videos and like monkey clip them to such a point or monkey chimp, what's it called? Where you clip it so much that it makes it like it's look like I'm saying something I'm not or something. But I literally don't get it. What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, what am I missing? People should live stream their lives. Damn it. Let me see people eat their dinner while watching YouTube videos. That's what I want to do. If it generates numbers and income, great. I don't get mad at others for not making content that isn't like uh, as liked as others. It's lame. Yeah, I just don't understand it. You're missing that people think everything has to be transformative. Yeah, but why? Like, what does that mean? Isn't clip chimp? Thank you. Um, but isn't like transformative just me being there? Like, isn't that enough? I think I'm, I feel like I'm missing something from this narrative. Like, what am I missing? Am I just being too neurodivergent for this? I'm like, yeah, sure. Play my video, bro. I hope you fucking like it, bitch. Like, I don't care. People like to claim that them uploading videos takes views from the original. No one's going to watch your original video, bitch. Um, is that most people that watch those videos won't be watching the original otherwise? They're not going to watch it anyways. No one from XQC's audience is ever going to find my video. People in my video don't even know who Jack's films are. So like, I don't understand that. Like audiences don't, every time I get talked about in streams where the audiences know who I am, I get more views, period. When people talk about me, I get more views, 
right? But the audience has to care about you. And if XQC reviewed my content, his audience probably wouldn't care about me, but they were never gonna find my video anyway. So the one, two, three, five people that might hear something and go, hey, I kind of like that. I might go hop into that bubble, right? Like I'll take those five viewers, but otherwise no one at XQC's audience would ever see me unless he watched one of my videos. So for me, I'm like, this is a win. This could not be a loss for me, right? So maybe I'm just like confused because to me, I'm like, this is a win. Million subscribers. She uploads daily and her videos get at least a million views each. So what does she do? She steals TikToks and reacts to them. Oh, it looks like a cartoon. Let's talk about. That's a reaction. Transformative. Counts. About how egregious this freebooting is. In each of her hundreds and hundreds of videos, she plays other people's TikToks and provides extremely base level commentary. This dude is running sideways. What? Wow. If you want to support the original creators of the TikToks, uh, too bad. Because the only links you'll find in the description are all Sniper Wolf. And my Lots of content creators do this, and I've even done it before in my past. It's not great, and I definitely need to get in the habit. Again, right now I'm doing it, and I already have this huge doc with all these clips. It's annoying, but I understand. Even Ab and Preach or other big YouTubers, some of us fail. Some of us forget to link. Some of us, like, it's not like everyone's doing it on purpose, and I understand. I agree that for the goodness of the community, it's nice to post the links. I agree with this. I just don't think it's that deep since... Oh, so many people. Have you ever been watching a video and you go to the description to see if they linked the video and they didn't? It's it feels so common to me as a content creator or as a viewer. Like I'm always hopping into people's videos. Like, oh, I which wonder what video this was. And people forget to link the original. Now, for her, she needs to have a team or someone to do it for her. It's not a big deal at the end of the day for someone to be like, hey, you should do this. But is it a part of the rules? That's what I want to know. Is it against TOS to not post the original link? And if it's not, then why are we projecting our values onto her? My favorite part is that half of the TikToks she includes either crop out the original username or just straight up don't have one. To use a recent example from just three days ago, she features 19 videos, 13 of which don't have any identifiable usernames. That means there's no way to find and support the original creators here. All of the views and all of the revenue Wait, I agree with this. Uh, goth says, is it Zia or Goth? Which one do you want me to call you? To be very honest, I've never clicked into the description nor caption to find the source of a meme I like. I typically just Google the main beats and find it. Me too. I just Google. I like, because like, usually the link they give you isn't even the original anyways. So it's like, eh. Straight to Sniper Wolf. You know the phrase, work smarter, not harder? Well, Sniper Wolf does neither. She just steals and doesn't credit anyone and has become a zillionaire in doing so. <laughs> a fire hydrant exploded, and the water's just going everywhere. Pretty cool. Now, some of you might be th thinking, so what? Who yeah, cares? so what? She's giving creators exposure. And hey, maybe she gets permission from the creators to feature their work. You already know the answer to that. I we do. reached out to creators who've had their work featured in Sniper Wolf's videos. And when we asked them if Sniper Wolf and or but it's because no one cares about your content. I don't know how to, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Look, as somebody who's always remained a small YouTuber, and I'm so grateful for this position, I've had so much exposure by bigger YouTubers, so much, and I just don't have the content that maintains the audience and people don't come looking for me all the time. My niche is very specific. Philosophy is a very hard niche on YouTube unless you're doing traditional academia, which I don't care about, right? That's a, <laughs> so Western philosophy right there. But like, again, like that's the problem, right? Is that it doesn't, no offense, and I mean this in the nicest way, the chances that even if Sniper Wolf literally featured you and gave your name out, it might not do a difference either. I had to learn this the hard way because I would collab with these huge YouTubers, like people with millions of views. And I'm like, why is my channel not growing? And it's because when the audience came to my channel, like no one gives a fuck about philosophy. Nobody wants to hear about me rant about bubbles, like except you wonderful people. They want to hear me talk about like what's trending and what's my opinion on Hamas and Israel. Like they want to hear like the sensational dramas. Like, and I get it. Like, okay, I got it. Same. But also like, I think I'm, I'm too cautious about my work 
and I take it like a little bit too seriously to comment on things that I know I'm not qualified for. But also like I have a specific niche I'm trying to do. So I had to accept that like unless I went more mainstream with my content, I was never going to get the views. And Sniper Wolf is very mainstream because it's the dumbest bottom, like the dumbest like children watch her. Like you're upset she's not transforming the content. If she did, she'd be less popular. That's what I'm trying to say. Sniper Wolf is better a business than all of us because we all try to actually put our personalities into it. We try to transform it, which is the mistake. The audience doesn't care about you. They literally don't give a fuck about you. They don't care. The audience, generally speaking, either wants you to agree completely with them or just be someone in the room while they react to content. The Sniper Wolf is killing the game. Because she's doing what all of us think don't do that. We want to be independent. Jack makes original content. We're all trying to be ourselves. Well, you know what? Maybe the world doesn't want us. <laughs> Maybe the world wants Sniper Wolf because apparently that's what's happening. Sniper Wolf's numbers do speak for themselves. It is what it is, right? Like, I feel like this is so weird to be jealous that she's making, aren't you, I'm so proud of my content. And I, if it means I have a niche audience, I'm okay with that. I make a good living. My audience is great. But like, if I went more superficial, I would hate my job. So yes, if you would like, I can go superficial and I could do the sniper wolf shtick and I could become very rich and famous. Or how about not, right? Like, that's the sacrifice you make. And I don't know why Jack is upset. Like, just be a sellout, Jack. Just sell fucking out and do what she does. That's like every content creator on TikTok who used to make like really fun content is starting to talk about Israel and Palestine and their views are going down and people are starting to hate them. And it's because like people don't come to content like that to be talk. They don't want they don't want to know about politics. They don't want to know about like your moral high ground. They want to watch fucking dumb TikToks and brain rot, which is great. I love it, too. Like, again, why would you go to Sniper Wolf for, like, insightful co – she just want basic commentary. You just want basic commentary. So she's killing the game, and I think being upset about it is weird. Or her team had contacted them about featuring their work, every creator said no. They were not contacted. Most of them were blindsided by the fact that Sniper Wolf had been using their content, and some of them were pretty upset about it. Okay, so she doesn't ask permission, but maybe creators get exposure from her videos. Oh, Discord says Jack did sell out when he made content on SS Sniper Wolf. I agree with you. So I'll show you his new channel he made, but I do think that's him selling out. It's like a weird moral high ground that I don't understand. And he did it for views and clout. Look at him. Now he's more popular than he's been. People like me who don't are, are on that side of YouTube are talking about him. People in my audience who've never heard of Jack are now hearing about him. So this is like a this feels like clout sharking to me, right? Um, she didn't become successful from reacts though, right? She, it was her gaming videos that were accused of being fake. Yeah. So apparently that's where I'm confused on because some of her videos, apparently according to her ex, of her gaming content was fake. He was playing it, but also she's done live gaming events. So I think she was still pretty good, but not all the content she pretended to play was her, which isn't the first time that's happened with content creators. Again, if it's not anti-TOS, I don't care, right? That's kind of my whole thing. Like have an opinion, but becoming obsessed over it is so strange to me. Especially if you can see their usernames, right? Well, let's test that theory. At the very beginning of a recent video, Sniper Wolf reacts. Ah. Uh Jack's videos were, oh no, I'm sorry. He thinks what he, she does is unethical and he doesn't want to do what it is to him unethical even if it gives him more views. Mm. To a viral TikTok, complete with her very insightful commentary. Uh-uh, uh-uh, absolutely not. And That's great commentary. Like, is that not great commentary? Look, you can see the original uploader's username. Maybe they got a little bump, right? Well, when I looked up their account on TikTok, I found they had a decent number of followers, but that's probably due to their whale shark video going viral last year. Because if you look at their most recent TikToks, they're hardly getting it. Who care? My bro. I, I'm so fucking confused. Basic YouTube 101. Just because one of your videos just goes viral, just because you have 15 minutes of fame does not matter. It doesn't matter. As Jax knows, as Jack Films knows, you have 5 million subbies, doesn't matter if nobody wants to watch your fucking content. That's why he's getting 300,000 views and 400,000 views until Sniper Wolf. Now he's back in the millions.
Like, what is he mad about? What am I missing from this story? What is he mad about? This is so normal. This is very normal stuff on YouTube. This is why our job is so difficult to maintain, like to be relevant. Even some of the biggest top content creators on TikTok are always talking about how people are like, oh, your channel's gone down, your channel's gone down. That's just normal. One of my friends, okay, we're like friendly. I'm mostly friends with Rick, but Tim's really great and I love Tim too. Tim Chonsoronsu, he is one of the most OG YouTubers. I've met him. He's the nicest. I've, you know, Rick and I are friends. They do a podcast together called No Chaser. Great podcast. I love Tim. Tim also has over 4 million subscribers. And look, his channel does not get views. It gets good views. He's making money. His brand is solidified. He was on TV. He works with Nick Cannon. He has his, his reputation. But for me, his YouTube channel is stable. For other people, they're like, oh, your channel died. Nobody watches anymore. It doesn't matter. What matters is that he's making content. Look, he did a video literally with... um. Uh, Kelly, well, not Kelly, but Kelly from Saved by the Bell literally did a yeah, video like with her more. and it got 80,000 views. In some universe, that would have gotten 5 million views. But for whatever reason, right? For whatever reason, it only got 80,000 views. Okay? I love Tim. But you don't see Tim complaining. You see Tim being grateful. You don't see Tim being like, why is Sniper Wolf so famous? Tim is very lovely. And I think he just, he does what he does and he likes it, right? I know Tim from JJK, uh, JK News. I love JK News. I love them. So yeah, like I love this whole bubble. So I'm, I've been on side, this side of YouTube for a very long time. I love everyone on this side of YouTube. I love all the like Asian content creators. I love all of the people who do this comedy stuff. Like I love that, right? My childhood crush, let's go. But look, I love him. But again, you don't see Tim making a whole complain. You know what I mean? Why would it get views? Children don't watch, don't know Saved by the Bell. That's a great point. So that's the problem, right? Is like, why is Jack's Films making such a big deal out of this? You know what I mean? Because this is normal. It is very normal for content. Just because you're promoted by a bigger content creator doesn't mean you're going to blow up. Any views at all, which means that no, people aren't flocking to the original creators, even when their username is displayed on screen. Yes. So what are you complaining about? Discord, sort of exact, Discord says exactly he found the things to make money in a similar way that she does. To me, this is why he hates himself. He is judging so harshly f for something he himself is doing. I mean, every time we're mad at people, we're really mad at ourselves, right? Um, Because we're not accepting the situation for what it is or we're doing the same thing, I believe. he His acting is horrible because he knows he ain't shit either. He sees her in a way that he hates. Um, He sees her, in her what he hates about himself. And I think that's why he hates on her so intently. I could be wrong, but that is the only way I can figure out his attention to make her, um, to her, to make sense to me. Same. Like, I feel like I don't understand what's going on with this, right? It, I don't know. It's strange and fascinating to see you miss this. I'm not missing this. I'm happy to have this conversation, right? I'm happy if you guys want to jump on Discord, I'll pull you into my chat and you guys can talk to me about it. But I don't think I'm missing this. I think the world is so bubbled that it's like completely not, it's missing the whole YouTube. I'm sorry, like as a content creator that like just is obsessed with algorithms and trying to figure this out, I am more than aware, right, of w how the game is being played. And it's like Jack is pretending he doesn't know while playing the game pretty damn well in my opinion, right? He's doing exactly what he has to do to get money. He's going after a bigger content creator creating drama and moving clout. And he's lucky she went to his house because if she never went to his house, he would have no ground to stand on, in my opinion. And now she fucked it up. She went crazy the way Sniper, and I'm indifferent. I don't like either of them personally. I think they're both cringe. But Sniper Wolf went to his house and now he has a ground to step on. But before that, he had no ground, in my opinion, to like go after Sniper Wolf, right? In my opinion. And remember, this is the first TikTok in a video with well over a million views. But guess who's reaping all the benefits? People would rather watch Sniper Wolf, Sniper Wolf reacting than the original content. That's pretty normal. <gasps> Believe it or not, it actually gets worse. Because sometimes Sniper Wolf steals from other content thieves. Here she is reacting to an Among Us cartoon made by viral for you and shocker that's not the original creator so okay 
I do this again. Am I morally obligated? Because I'm confused. How when I watch a TikTok, I don't think is this the original content creator? I just take the link and I'll put it in my description or I'll watch the video and not think about it. Right. So like I am curious on why this matters, because if she saw the video on the TikTok, she saw it on and she's showing that video in stream. Why would she sh like is she supposed to do the work to find the original one? Because I never think about that. Why would I even think about that? You know what I'm saying? Unless I, I believe something like, is there a values thing? Like, I understand if it's your values, but I don't think it's mine. Like, I don't think I value this at all, but I'm not sure if I should, or if there's like some community concept I'm not understanding here. What is this bubble, right? If it's like, she's reacting to the video she found, is she obligated to go find the original, original, original one? Like, I'm not sure. Because we found the original creator, it only has 1,600 views here on YouTube, but it went bonkers on TikTok when someone else freebooted it. Okay, right. So somebody else stole it on TikTok, and Sniper Wolf watched the TikTok. So what's the problem? Here's the original creator confirming that their work was indeed stolen. So for everyone claiming, well, at least Sniper Wolf's not hurting anyone, she very much is. Yeah, I don't get this. I don't get this argument. Like, I don't get the argument. What am I missing here? You know what I mean? So can people steal songs too if the band stealing it is more famous? I mean, the original band would never get that big without the song either. I don't understand the argument. We're YouTubers. We make reaction videos. People do this all the time. Like, it's literally so common that I, and I don't have a problem with it. Again, like, if you use someone's song and they go after you, that's one thing, right? But not everyone's going to feel this way. And I think claiming that it's objective is weird. So like a song feels different than than content you upload to YouTube, right? Because again, like even pictures and like, yeah, the people have the right to go after you. And I think you should like pay attention to that if the content creators don't want you using their stuff. But also you can use their stuff if it's in public because like that's what the rules are. So and again, like I don't think we have enough set up to protect everyone involved, right? Um, so I'm not I'm not sure if it's the same when you're video reacting versus music stealing versus making a new song. I, I'm not sure that we're really being honest about the conversation, right? So I think if we wanna be more serious about our content, like if people upload TikToks that aren't a part of a brand, but just like funny videos of their family, can you get upset if a YouTuber reacts to your family's TikTok because that was a family video, but you posted it on a public website? So I, yes, maybe, but then we have to have that conversation, right? So again, I'm not sure we're supposed to be mad at the content creators. We should be considering the system itself in this situation, I feel. But even if she did credit the creators and ask their permission to feature them, it still wouldn't make her content any better. Because, man, I cannot stress how nothing her commentary is. Oh, what's that? But that's what viewers want. Viewers want nothing commentary, so they never have to hate you for your views, so they can just enjoy the content. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how to tell you guys this. The general bubble wants you to be bland. They don't want your opinion. They don't want authenticity. They don't want the real you. They don't. They want bland and digestible. They want to feel not judged, right? A whole entire car just rolled into the neighbor's yard. Great commentary. What the fuck do you think? I'm sorry. I just feel like this is literally exactly what the masses want. How, like, if you don't like it, that's okay. Me neither. But why are you mad at Sniper Wolf? I don't get See, it. See, the reason I keep playing these clips is because of a little thing called fair use. The extremely important legal doctrine that allows creators to upload content that isn't theirs. And in order for content to fall under fair use, it must be transformative and add new meaning to the material. That's how I was able to monetize my old infomercial and Apple parodies. Yeah, I was using copyrighted content, but my satirical slant added transformative value. Going back to Sniper Yeah, but you s same thing to me. So to my brain, it's the same. What Sniper Wolf does is transformative to my brain. I don't know why that is, but I'm like, yeah, that's what else do you need? Like, I couldn't even imagine needing to do more than what she does, right? For me to be like, yep, transformative. Like, I don't know why he thinks he's being more transformative than her. I understand he's putting more effort in, but to me, what she's doing is transformative. Wolf, 
her commentary isn't so much transformative as it is just summarizing what we're watching. Someone caught a cow. Is that a cow? Oh no, one of them rolled down the hill. It's not even content, it's non-tent. Sniper Wolf is the damn that's crazy of reactors. So why am I going after Sniper Wolf in particular? After all, she's hardly the only person stealing other people's content and reaping all the benefits. Is it because, as she suggested, that I'm sexist and only go after female reactors? Well, no, 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 and no. Why does he go after people so much? And you might want to delete that tweet since you love deleting tweets about me, but more on that later. No, the real reason is actually this. Have you ever read a tweet that broke your brain? Because this broke mine. This is the official YouTube creator's account on Twitter with over 6 million followers acknowledging Sniper Wolf as a keynote speaker at last month's VidCon, claiming she gets her ideas from her fans. Now, there are several things wrong with this tweet. Like, why is she a keynote speaker at VidCon? Oh my God, he's so je is he so envious or am I crazy? He just feels like he's riddled with envy, dude. Who cares if she's a keynote speaker? Am I crazy? Who cares? Good for her. Congratulations. Why is YouTube creators bolstering this? But the worst thing about the tweet is this. Getting video ideas from her fans. Yeah, they, she probably does. Like, or she probably goes viral. I don't get it. What is the problem here? What she does does not meet the legal definition of transformative. She's violating TOS and making a lot of money. Then talk to her lawyers or talk to YouTube. She's obviously fine because YouTube, like, that's what I'm saying. Are you, so are you guys saying that the biggest content creator on YouTube, that YouTube has been backing up, that YouTube has been fighting for, is breaking the law in a way that YouTube wouldn't stop her from doing? Are you saying that you know more about her legal status than YouTube itself, which is keeping... Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sure that that's true. Like, I'm not sure that she isn't doing it according to the legal. And if she isn't, then somebody could do something about it. But it's like, wouldn't you would think YouTube would do it. Or somebody would stop her. I just don't know that she isn't really transforming it according to the law. What ideas? Quite literally, all she does is upload other people's TikToks. How is that an idea? What am I not getting here? Do her fans comment, here's an idea, you should react to more TikToks, and she- Well, no, like, my viewers, I have a Discord link in my Discord that says, like, video topic requests, and people just post a bunch of links there and videos and topics. Bam. And then, you know what I mean? Like, again, like, what is he saying? Does he really think this, like, her- I don't get what he's saying. He goes, damn, that's crazy. Sorry, I feel a little gaslit here. Seeing YouTube and VidCon boost this kind of activity is so disheartening. But what are they boost? I'm so confused. She makes a lot of money. She has a lot of views on her. She makes YouTube look good because people are watching her. What are we talking about? It sends a terrible message to creators. And that is, don't create, steal. Yeah. Oh my God. You figured out capitalism in America and business. <laughs> oh my God. He fucking figured it out. I'm so sorry. But like literally, the message isn't steal. The message is make views. And people don't give a fuck about your original con co like, co like content. Viewers don't care about original content in the high masses. They don't last. Nobody gives a fuck. People would rather watch people react to other people. People would rather watch drama. People don't care about original content. That's why it never makes it. That's why artists suffer. Have you ever heard of a... Hello, sir. YouTubers are artists when they're creating original, original content. My podcast, which I love, which is original content. Okay. I don't react to videos during my podcast. I've done it a couple times when I was like low on spoons, but I make original content for my podcast and it gets less views than my reaction content or my commentary comment because say it with me, audiences want to see ideas clash. They want to see you with somebody else. They don't care about, like, they like original content, but they like it to be spicy and sensational if we're talking about the masses. Sniper Wolf is, I don't understand. Why is he upset at Sniper Wolf? You can be mad at the system. You can talk about capitalism. But, like, girl, we're all playing games in these bubbles, and Sniper Wolf is just playing a game that Jack doesn't want to play. You can't be mad at her for playing a game and winning that you're not even playing the game. Jack and Sniper Wolf are not playing the same game. He's not mad at her. He's mad at YouTube. He's mad at the world. He's mad at the bubbles. 
But like, so, so everyone is playing a game. And I feel like Jack is just envious that he's not doing it. Didn't PewDiePie used to react to videos? He still does. PewDiePie still reacts to videos. Literally. It's one of my favorite types of content. Cinnamon Toast Ken reacts to videos. They do commentary. I love them. It just like, again, you know what I mean? I don't understand. Like, why is he truly upset? Brittany, it's not the same thing though. How? How? Word of the day, Brittany is confused. Like, I, I don't get it. There are people making original clothes and there's Supreme. That should exist everywhere in our society. We just want to focus on the topics that trigger Fifi's. I guess Desi manifestos can be funny. I love his manifestos. Fire. But like, yeah, I don't get it. Like, what is he really upset about? I could never imagine being upset that like, like this is a bit. Anyway, let's. Why make content when you can curate it? What's the point in writing music or animating or perfecting your craft when you- Yes, but Habibi, listen to me, Habibi, have you never heard of a life of an artist? It's the life of an artist. People, this is like the pain we've all felt as like original content creators. And let's be real, like I watch mostly reaction and commentary channels. I mostly watch the news because people are reacting to somebody else, right? I watch documentaries because they're about, say it with me, someone else movies aren't about artists they're about a story that is about someone else we're not watching a movie because of a director i mean some people are we're watching a movie because it's telling a story about someone else you know what i mean and you can just upload someone else's hard work and say this is nuts like i cannot even believe what i'm seeing right now me neither <laughs> the other reason i'm going after sniper wolf is she made fun of my hairline now that's something only my wife, friends, family, and viewers get to do. <sighs> Not you, Sniper Wolf. Never you. You know, maybe you should react to better comebacks because this is embarrassing. I, I Discord says, I don't know much about this man, but it seemed to me that he reached a limit and needed a target for emotions. It's not sensible, but it's normal. Yeah, I feel like this is really normal, like outrage, but I just at the same time, so silly. Like, I just don't understand why you're upset. I don't think he's envious. I'm not getting that vibe at all. He just thinks what she is doing isn't right and is commenting uh, on her. Um, I think he said, though, himself, right? Like, it teaches the content creators not to make art. But it's – you have to listen to the way he says it. There's no benefit to making original art because it doesn't make views. So when you do it, you have to do it for yourself, which is why you have to make a Patreon. So people pay for your original art versus ad revenue, right? So – he is upset that original content creators aren't getting views, but you can't be upset that people want what people want. Like the world, it's the numbers show the reality. And the reality is, is that people don't care about your original art unless they're a super fan of you. And in that case, like, what are you going to do about it, right? So I think he is envious that she's doing the bare minimum and getting very famous without understanding that like, that's what your audience wants. And that's a type of audience. Not every audience. My audience doesn't want that, right? His audience doesn't want that. But the audience that is famous and makes people famous, that's what they want. You can be upset about it, but that's just being upset at people. You're not even upset. You're just mad that people are people. Humans are going to human, my friend. Humans are going to human. Humans on a mass scale, they are the ones consuming all the stuff that like is, is digestible to them. And Sniper Wolf is digestible to them. I like that's it. That's just the reality of it. I get why you deleted it. I would delete it too. Woof. Now, part of the reason Sniper Wolf has gotten away with this theft for so long is that her audience is children. And I don't mean that condescendingly. I mean her viewers are literally kids. Yeah, top creators on YouTube appeal to children. Period. Next. Kids. And kids don't care about things like content theft or freebooting. They just want to go to the page with all the funny TikToks. Wow, this YouTuber has all the coolest TikToks. I really want to know how Sniper Wolf finds all those videos to react to. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Maybe from the people that made them? By the way, that's a real tweet from YouTube. Are you starting to see why my blood's boiling? No. So Sniper Wolf's viewers don't care or know about the stolen content. Maybe we should tell them. 
Maybe we write things in our comments section like credit the creators or hey, I wonder where these TikToks came from or you think she has permission to use these or why is her commentary not? Okay, so is Jack going to start saying that we need permission to react to content? Because I don't want to live in that world. Do you want to live in that world? I don't want to live in a world where people have to like contact me to do permission on reacting to my channel. If it's public, react to it, girl. You know? So is he saying, see, with that one sentence, is he saying, okay, is he saying he wants to live in a world where people have to contact you to react to your content, which will 100% ruin so much for all of us, right? Kay, Kay says, I think Brittany's just saying that if people really cared about what they said they cared about, they would be mad at the cause of the problem versus the symptom. I agree. Sniper Wolf is a symptom. You can't be that mad at her. I think it's envious to be mad at her, right? It's just envious to be mad at her. Be mad at the system. Be mad at how it works. But it's like, it. this is just like life. You know, I don't get it. Transformative. She's merely summarizing what we're watching. Okay, maybe that last one's a little too verbose for the kitties, but you get my point. Now, Sniper Wolf. If you're watching this, hi, big fan, you're probably thinking a few things right now. One is... You already have to do that with music and movies? Yeah, and it's a pain in the fucking ass. That's why I don't have music and videos. That's why I have to contact, like, small content creators and say, hey, like, can I use your music in my videos and hope they never change their fucking mind and I have to go back through all my videos and, like, what, get rid of the music, take down my content? We, I work with artists I know personally about music, so I hope they never one day change their mind about it but like that would suck you know what i mean like again i don't think you guys are understanding that video creation is under fair use which is a completely different game than music has been and even music is allowed to do fair use depending on how they do it so i don't know why people keep comparing video content creation to music right they're two different industries with completely different rules why is he so obsessed with me to which i say are you serious i just I just told you that. See, this is so weird. This is so unhinged. A moment ago. Another thing you might actually be thinking is, he's just jealous of my success. Envious. And you know what, Sniper Wolf? I am. Of course I am. You've stolen your way to the top. That's insane. Grow up. Grow up. You've made your million. Jack, you were never going to be famous like Sniper Wolf. You would have been if you were. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. But off the backs of hundreds of other creators who didn't really consent to this partnership you forced upon them. And I'm not just jealous. I'm jaded. This is my 17th year on YouTube. And I've seen this platform evolve countless times since I started in 2006. Back then, the content YouTube would boost was sketch comedy or meticulous music videos or content. Just genuine, actual content. Today, the very definition of content is arguable because anything can be content, for better or for worse. Yeah, I just don't understand what is this. This is not a part of my value system. I don't think I care. Like, I don't, yeah, I'm not, <sighs> yeah, I don't have this. Like, I don't have this, Th whatever this is, I don't have it. Like, I think I'm too independent maybe, or maybe I just don't care. Maybe I'm just proud of what I'm already doing, but I can't imagine caring about what another content creator is doing. If it's like a game, again, you're playing a game and all the bubbles allow a certain game to be played. You might think it's unethical, but YouTube obviously doesn't. So like, what are you mad about? At the end of the day, just do what she's doing or don't, but complaining about it feels so weird. Because, okay, so she starts crediting all the videos. She starts getting everyone's permission. Then what? What are you going to complain about? She's going to make the same commentary. You lack the victimization to relate. True. I really don't play the victim game right now. Like, I can't, especially with this stuff. You know what I mean? You'd think he makes artistic short films or quality documentaries, but no, his videos are trash. We're going to watch them in a second, okay? Yet here you are reacting to something you don't care about. I mean, I care about this. I care about the interpersonal relationship, right? Th I do care about that part. This is amazing to me. Watching human beings like self-sabotage is so f interesting. Like, why would you do this, right? This is so interesting. When you turn on the water, it's going to fill up the water bottle. Oh, and then the water pours out of it so you can wash your hands. I'm just gonna Also, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, Cody Ko actually did a collaboration with... Um, um, oh, hold on. Let me find it. Let me find it. Hold on. I'm going to say it. This sucks. 
This absolutely sucks. Both the thing itself and YouTube's promotion of it. So now what? Where do we go from here? I've said my piece. Guys, what's that YouTuber's name with million or Facebook guy with like 100 million views and he makes really minimal like 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 really simple simple content cody co did a, a collaboration with him and people would make fun of him like your content's so stupid who's it for it's actually for people who don't speak english it's actually for the world global audience and he makes his videos really simple just like sniper wolf does which is also why i think she has a lot of views i bet she has a lot of international viewers because when you have a global audience you actually do want to use the least amount of commentary so they can feel like they're in the club so this guy talked about it how he makes like literally billions of views off a global audience by simplifying all the dialogue what was his name it was so interesting because at first I was judging it too like what is this content who is this for and it actually is for a global audience um oh what was he called no not no he's very famous he's more like he does his numbers are outrageous, but it's mostly on Facebook and stuff because, again, the audience is there. Oh, hold on. But I'll find it. What is it? Will anything actually change? Oh, what is it called? Probably not. Uh, Darman. Yes, Darman. Which is why Darman. I'm not done. Last year, I made a new channel called Jigga Jack's Films. It was a parody of Sniper Wolf's channel where I reacted to her videos, but in the most drawn-out way possible. What's up? Soak for seven days. Oh, my gosh. A whole week to make paper? No, thanks. I'll just buy it at the store. Uh, no, I kid, of course. No, it's a very complicated process. A whole week. Uh, it's been one week since you made me paper. <laughs> These videos were intentionally hard and painful to watch, which got me thinking, what if I made them entertaining? Instead of playing a character... Wow, he really thinks he's so fucking smart. If I just graded each one of her reactions wow. with legitimate criticism, and what if I credited the creators whenever possible, both in the video and in the description? And what if, occasionally, I enlisted the help of my good friend, Jack GPT? Jarvis, please write a haiku on why freebooting is bad. Pirates of the web. <laughs> Snatching memes with no cred? Original sad. Why, you could call that transformative. Heck. I'd argue it even falls under fair use. Wouldn't you agree, Sniper Wolf? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, literally. Not really asking. <laughs> it's minus 57 degrees. <gasps> minus 57 degrees. Yeah, that's what he. That's what he said. Yep. Tried to pour a can of Coke. You try to pour a can of Coke. <laughs> stop! Stop! Stop repeating. You just. She's just repeating what they say louder. Anyways, yeah, the so? first video is already up on Judge Jack. That's great. Okay, let's go watch. Okay, so now wait, hold on. Before we go to his Judge Jack's films, in twenty seventeen, these are his videos on his main channel. Okay, so he has four, almost five million subscribers. Okay, literally five million, basically. Um, let's see. Um, so okay. Uh, what's a what's a regular video of his actually? Is this one it? When he's talking about down. Okay, I will Good link the video girl, now. Stay. This is for you, Chip. Oh, and wait. No, one else. no, he sings in the song, and I think he copyrighted the music. Just kidding. My bad. Um, okay, so wait. Uh, the Mar Okay, the movie. Okay, does he do movie reviews? Wait, is this? Okay, this has 500,000 views from six months ago. Last night, I saw a midnight showing of the Super Mario Brothers movie. I wore my finest suit and went out with all my friends, just me and the boys, tearing it up. And I brought my pen and pad with me so I could take down all the notes. And gamers, let me tell you, I did not think I would like this movie. The reviews have been so mixed are movie at reviews best, original content and also illumination. And at first, when the movie started, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking fall asleep. I was a little scared, and I kind of loved it. So first, Chris Pratt as Mario, it's fine. Is the highest. I'm literally so bored. Next. Previously, I tried naming the first 301 Pokemon, and I successfully did it with no errors. This little, this little doodad's Charizard. I'm pretty sure this little. This Does he talk like the slowest human I've ever heard talk in my guy, life? This little guy with the feet, it's Charizard. Dinosaur. Dinosaurs are depicted with thicker, stubbier legs than camels. Camels have like joints and elbows and shit, right? And they can kneel. I don't think dinosaurs can kneel. Dinosaur, dino, 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 or it's either got dino. Next. 
Oh my God, I'm gonna kill myself. Twitter is dying and it's very funny. Elon Musk's strategy of allowing anyone to buy verification somehow backfired. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Which is why yesterday I asked you. Oops, I forgot. Sorry. Oh, fuck. See, I forgot to link the videos. Fuck. See, I forgot to grab the video links for the videos that I showed. Damn it. This is so fucking exhausting. Jesus Christ. I'm just going to fucking never react to anything again. Oh, my God. This is so annoying. Okay. Did I link this already to you guys? Fuck. Do we save the dying bird app? Things are not well in the Twitterverse, so let's make them weller. Make us watch two ads before posting a tweet. Shoot, I hate how good this one is. You'd really have to think about how badly you want to tweet that hot take of yours. I mean, if it works on YouTube, right? Well, no, that no, that that's not quite right. That would be like watching two ads before uploading. That would make me question my job. Yeah. Elon has to approve every tweet before it gets posted. Yeah, that'll fix it. I literally watched no, this is not normal. I'm sorry, Brittany, but this is completely normal. I think TikTok might have ruined your brain. I watch five hour lectures on philosophy and I never get bored. I watch, I will watch a 10 hour lecture on philosophy and I never get bored. I watch literal philosophy professors talk about hours of hours of academia content, never get bored. I know what entertainment is and it's supposed to be stimulating to my brain. What is he doing? What is the shtick? And I also don't like, I don't, okay, this is fine. He has an audience, obviously, but he's just reading tweets and doing news stories. So his content is also not original. I mean, it's not even original than anyone else's. So he's also watching content. His content isn't even original. I'm so confused. Like, so he has Twitter is dying, LOL. The Y I A Y, what does that mean? Six, seven, this is his 600th and 17th episode of this thing and again i'm not team sniper wolf i'm not team jack i just think they're both fucking cringe and i don't know why he thinks he has the moral high ground here so again this his is memes the content, are always right? so good and definitely not ripped from like our funny that guy definitely gets humor he was wario once he's making the same amount of commentary she's making make a yearly award show to choose the best tweet of the year the winner gets to own twitter for a year until the next year award holy moly batman there should be oh this what is, is his content? I don't get it. So his content is just like reacting to other people's content. The same thing that she does. This is YouTuber Jimbo Lives. Oh, wait, You've probably never this. heard of him before, but I promise by the end of this video, you'll be convinced that Jimbo Lips is the most dangerous channel on YouTube. Damn. And I'm honestly shocked that no Maybe. one else is talking about him. Back in July, Jimbo Lips was caught giving birth in their Discord voice chat. <laughs> A very sacred- Okay, I'm just saying he's not doing anything different from Sniper Wolf. Like, I, I don't know if you guys are just like his fans or something, but he's not doing anything different than what Sniper Wolf is doing. It's all the same to my brain. He sees content, reacts to it. I don't understand why there's a problem. Why in the world could he be upset with Sniper Wolf? Okay, now, so this is his actual channel. This is his original content, which I'm very confused about. And again, Sniper Wolf is Sniper Wolf. I don't watch her. I don't, I haven't watched her in literally like 10 years. I don't even know what she's doing right now, except because of this. So that's fine. Okay, it just feels really weird for him to judge her when this is his content. So fine. Okay, let's watch his other channel. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's like something I'm missing um, let me see. Does he have a channels? Okay, J -J Jack's Films. There's only one specific- He has 500,000 subscribers who watch this channel, basically making fun of Sniper Wolf. Okay, fine. So 10 days. X Bingo. You know what? We haven't done X Bingo in a while. Here's how X Bingo works, gamers. You're not even watching the video? Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. You guys- in 2017. Oh, you said it. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Just as an, for the record, the reason I'm this not, I wasn't going to watch the whole video is because like as a com, like I'm not the audience. Like I'm not the audience. I would never sit through this video, but let's go. Super Jimbo Lips. You've probably never heard of him before, but I promise by the end of this video, you'll be convinced that Jimbo Lips is the most dangerous channel on YouTube. And I'm honestly shocked that no one else is talking about him. Back in July, Jimbo Lips was caught giving birth in their Discord voice chat. <laughs> A very sacred act that should be done in private, never on Discord voice chat. <laughs> Honestly, kind of cool though. 
No, it's not. He talks so It's cool. not even a little cool. How much is too much, Jimbo Lips? In one of his most recent controversies- Oh, I can't do it that way. The music is awful. Nope, just kidding. Oh, the music is awful and it's sped up. Jimbo Lips was caught- I can't do 1.5 because the music is awful in my ear. Putting a blooper reel at the end of their apology video. <laughs> Hmm. <clears throat> Though a revolutionary idea, it's still heavily frowned upon. Jimbo Lips. You're gonna start an Adpocalypse 5.0. Is that where we're at? Five minutes ago, Jimbo Lips was caught throwing mustard at a guy in a New York bodega. <laughs> and the story was submitted by Bring Back Wario Ass. Thank you. So, okay, you guys are saying, I agree with Olivia. Just because I don't find him funny doesn't mean I don't find him. I find him the same as Sniper Wolf. What he's doing is not the same. How is it not the same? Like, it just feels like the same to me. You know what I mean? Like, there's content and you react to it. He's not, like, it's, I don't get it. Like, it's just the same. You might not agree with to the extent she's commenting on her content, but, like, then you're not the audience for her. Do you get what I'm saying? You can't be mad at Sniper Wolf for being successful at a game she's good at playing because she is giving the audience what they want. So like, why isn't she allowed to do that? Like, do you get what I'm saying? I don't understand. Who cares if you don't like the commentary she's doing? I don't like Jax. I don't like, I don't like hers. I don't watch either of them. But what does it matter? Like the people who watch them want that vibe. That's what I'm saying. If you like Jack, you like his vibe. If you like Sniper Wolf, you like her vibe. If you like me or Dr. Kirkonda or somebody who pauses the video and talks for 30 minutes, you like that. Literally, so many people must hate my videos because I pause it and I talk for like 20 minutes. But for some people, that's what they like. So why, what is the issue? He gives credit. Okay, that's fine. So if Sniper Wolf gave credit, would it be enough? Would it be enough? Because he then wanted her to give credit to the original artists, but I think that's asking too much of content creators. I think it is asking way too much of content creators to find the original, original, original links of TikToks instead of just the TikTok they came across. So if she's like watching a specific TikTok, she, get, she could, if she wants, give a link to that. I don't think it matters. If YouTube wants to make it a rule, that's fine. But I, according to my values, don't think it matters if you like put the links in your description. I think it's fine if you want to do that. And I think if they make it TOS, that's fine. But I don't think it actually objectively matters, right? So I just, again, we're going to watch this whole video because you guys are saying I should do it. But it doesn't make sense to me because she's stealing content creators work without consent. It doesn't matter if people like her vibe more. She's not stealing any more than the rest of us, right? Like all of us do this. All of us don't get permission explicitly from content creators before we make videos, Everybody on the internet who watches something, everyone on TikTok who makes a stitch isn't getting permission except the fact that the content creators who posted it on a public forum gave permission for their content to be transformed in a way. That's the only difference, right? I don't think that is that big of a deal, right? Thank you for your vigilance. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. Susan, what are we going to do about Jimbo Lips? Just over a week ago, Jimbo Lips was under fire for playing Nintendogs while the plane is taking off, jamming the navigation system. Okay, Nero says, but Brittany, you also post the links you were reacting, reacting to only because of recently. I never did it before because it was too much work. Like, unless it was one single video, if it was like 10 TikToks, I never posted the TikToks before. They, I have videos up right now that do not have the links on them because it was too much work. And I got, ex like, it's, I never thought about it before. The only reason I link videos now is because it's like one video or two videos, no big deal. But if it's like 10 TikToks, then I mostly don't link the TikToks. So if it's a law and I don't know about it, I'll start linking shit, but I never thought to link it before. I literally never thought to link it before. It just feels like something I, like, why would I do that? Like I never, a TikTok specifically. So again, I don't care if that's how you guys, like your values work and everything. But for me, like, I don't even think about it. You know what I mean? I don't know how you didn't hear about this. This was worldwide news. This was trending on Twitter for a day. It was awful. They had to go back to the gate. The flight was delayed by an hour. He can't keep getting away with it. You may have forgotten this, but Jimbo Lips was actually trending worldwide for a few hours for inventing a time machine and going back to live stream the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. We all remember the thumbnail of that one. So what's, I, I'm confused. I don't know how to follow this content, right? 
Like maybe this is like, I don't understand what the content is. Right. He was soy facing at the. Like, I don't, is he, what is, what is this content? I don't get it. The moment of impact because he was there. Imagine having that access to that kind of technology. No. Mohammed says that doesn't mean what Sniper Wolf is doing is moral. Try to take it out of your own perspective. No, you take it out of yours. That's what I'm saying. Yours is no better than mine. We are all the same. This is my opinion. That's your opinion. But no one has the objective moral standing here. Take it out of your bias. You want her to do something that for millions of content creators is like super strange or for other people doesn't matter, right? I'm also confused, Jasmine. What is this video about from Jack? How am I supposed to keep track of this? Like, I don't know what the point of this video is. But yeah, no, like we're all in our bias is the point of my video, right? We're all in bubbles, parody and satire. This is parody and satire for what though? What is it? Gee, this I is his original video content. This is not his Jack, Jack, Jack films. And using channel. it as clickbait. Shame on you, Jimbo Lips. And shame on YouTube for allowing this film. So you don't link because it's too much work and because it never crossed your mind? Yeah, it like never crossed my mind. And when I watch like 10 TikToks in a video, I never think like, oh, people want this original TikTok. I never, because I don't want it. So I always do what I think I would want. So like I wouldn't want the TikTok. I, I don't care if people link. I don't care as a content creator if people link my stuff. So I never thought to link people's stuff unless my audience was like, hey, Brittany, what was that TikTok? I'm like, oh shit, okay, I'll link it. Do you get what I'm saying? I, as a content creator, don't care if people link my videos when they react to it. I never think about it. So if people want their shit linked, I'm happy to link it. If my audience is like, Brittany, what's that TikTok link? I'll send it to them. But I, as a content creator, just did what was natural to me and I never thought about it. But I think it's fair if people want their content linked. Again, you can do you. I just never thought about it, right? Like I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. It's not the same. You have a bias towards React content since you're in the industry and want it to be and want to be immoral. So you would couldn't even realize change your opinion, even if you knew. That's the problem, right? Is like that's a bubble. It's a construct. These are all things we've made up, right? It's all things we've made up. And you guys are saying, hey, this rule I've made up, it's the right rule. Why is it the right rule? How do you know it's the right one? Right? People want credit. That's other people want credit. I don't care. Like literally as a content creator, I don't care, but I could see why other people would want it, right? I just think like projecting what you want onto everyone else is super weird. You know what I mean? Like I don't get it. So whatever. But again, like you do you, feel how you want to feel about it. But like, how do you know this rule you're making up is the right one? This utter captivating filth. And believe it or not, it gets worse. I'm nearly at tears thinking about this next story. At tears? I'm nearly at tears. Is that not grammatically correct? I'm in tears. I'm in tears? I'm nearly in tears. I, oh shit, that does sound better. Man, who asked? Fuck you. <laughs> I'm nearly in tears thinking about this next story. At Fuck you, shut up. <laughs> Honey, I'm trying to talk about Jimbo Lips, the disgusting YouTuber who did many, many wrong things. So you're an enabler is what you're doing. I love trash. And this is why Jimbo Lips continues to thrive. YouTube, we need to band together and de-platform this monster. I'm nearly in and at tears. Just last week, Jimbo Lips was caught making a podcast about how women are monsters who will yell at you if you- I don't get it, who is Jimbo? What am I following? The worst channel you've ever heard of. I don't know how to follow this content. A man feels emotion. I remember that. You do yell at me whenever I show emotion. Damn right. <laughs> What's next, Jimbo Lips? A masterclass on how to misogyny? Not on my watch. This next one's actually kind of sad. You might not want to hear this one. Just warning you, because it's bad. But Jimbo Lips' most infamous act, of course, was when he was caught calling Link Zelda. <laughs> Oh, I normally don't call for bullying other Again, like what is the con so YouTubers? Confused. You're confused too? It. Okay, good. Is my audience confused? Like I know we're on the philosophy side of YouTube and we're on like observing people and their actions. Like I feel like I'm in a completely different culture right now. What is the content? Like what, if I sent this to a friend, I would tell them I'm, what am I sending them? It's not a video essay because we watch those all the time. It's not a documentary. It's not a reaction content, but it is reaction content. What is this? Why does he have so many followers? I don't understand. I don't know. Like, I love it. Good for him. 
but I don't get it. It's a parody witch hunt, I guess. Interesting. I think it's fine to bully Jimbo Lips, maybe even beat him up a little. And if you think that's bad, get a load of this. Jimbo Lips, if you're watching this, I want you to know that I personally oh, never sorry, forgot about the time you were caught <laughs> for letting girlfriend do OnlyFans and being okay with it. I thought you were a Chad, Jimbo Lips. Turns out you're just a soy boy beta cuck. For I can see why I never watched this dude before, but I'm so glad we're giving him a chance before judging. For shame. But that pales in comparison yeah, to might what he did too. next. Jimbo Lips hit peak controversy when he was caught kicking a child across a football field because he wanted to see how many times it bounced. What is this? But you keep, okay, hold on. You keep saying, I'm not even a Jack's Film fan, but you got to admit that the satire parody is kind of funny, but I don't know what we're parodying. at. What do we, what's the parody? What's the satire? Am I too autistic for this? Like, what's the parody? What's the satire? What are we satire? I don't, I, I don't get it. He's not satiring. This is his normal content. This is not him making fun of Sniper Wolf. This is not, this is not a Sniper Wolf parody. Like, what is the parody? This is his normal series. This is his Y-I-A-Y series. This is number 613. Did you find out? 14. It's for science. Spoken like a true Jimbo Lips defender. They want, baby. <clears throat> but that pales in comparison to what he did next. On August 22nd, Jimbo Lips was caught leaking Victoria's Secret. Secret secrets are no fun unless you share with everyone. Which ironically is Victoria's Secret. This next one fills me with rage. Jimbo Lips, that rapscallion, that monster, was then caught destabilizing the electric car market after making too many Tesla giveaway videos. Thanks a lot, Jimbo Lips. Now we're back to being dependent upon fossil fuels, and it's all your fault. Yeah, you're a dick. This next one really sucks. If you are easily offended, I highly recommend you just close your ears for this next one, because it is bad. One fortnight ago, Jimbo Lips was caught wearing a tail butt plug to VidCon. Those are butt plugs? The good ones, the expensive ones are, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your journalism. He's parroting cancel culture witch hunts. Who is Jimbo Lips? Yeah, I wanna know that too. How is this a parody? He's referencing another video probably. It is a series, I'm sure we're missing context, but it says number 613. Do I have to watch all 600 episodes to get the context? So his content's very niche, which is fine. But like, if you just sent this, okay, this is how YouTube, this is how views work, guys. So I send this random video to a random person. Will they understand the context or do they have to reference it? If they don't understand the context, then it's not gonna get more views. So when Jack says like, oh, my channel doesn't have as many views, it's like, yeah, but if I sent this to somebody, I am a YouTuber, I live on YouTube, what is this? What part of YouTube is this? I can't just, if I send this to my sister, she'd be like, what is this? If I send this to my brothers, they'd be like, what is this? So again, it's fine, but the only people who would understand this is his niche audience, which is great. We love that. So like, what is the issue? It's kind of like inside joke. So you got to be a part of the community to get it like a separate bubble. Oh Lord. Okay, great. I love that. That's great. It's made up channel that he parody witch hunts. Okay, that's great. So this content isn't for new viewers. It's for viewers who are like, who have been following for 600 episodes. 99% of the audience members on YouTube would not get the joke at all. Okay. It's him reacting to stuff his audience sends. Okay. Ooh, oh my God, this is exhausting. Okay, so this is the content that he does on his main channel that he doesn't understand why it's more popular because it's an inside joke. Inside jokes are for small communities. That's what I'm confused about. People make at least 15 to 25 subconscious judgments about you within seconds of seeing you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, totally, totally. You can't turn that part off in your brain, but you can ask your conclusions are true. Exactly. It's called introspection. PewDiePie literally was inspired by, is this Luai? Leave your... I know, I watch PewDiePie. I'm obsessed. I just love him, but I haven't watched him as much recently, but I love PewDiePie. Isn't it just that he wants to have more views? He wants snipers to have less? Yeah, but no one's going to watch this if it's an inside joke. But wait, he has 5 million followers and he's angry? Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like it's just big rich people being like, why aren't I more rich? This is the original of that. This is the original of that. 
okay, that makes sense, actually. Lawai. So, okay. So PewDiePie parodied Lawai, which I've watched. I've watched most of those episodes. Issue with Sniper Wolf just sits and makes wow sounds. Yeah, but most, a lot, so many people do that. Who cares? I love that. That's the, whatever. It obviously works. She has millions of views. Like, that's what I mean. Are you just mad that her shit works? Does he seriously care that certain random videos of his aren't the most watched videos on YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Way to go, Jimbo Lips. You're on the wrong side of history. Frankly, this tea is scalding, says something else this disgusting YouTuber did recently was he was filming a live reaction of him telling his kid that he's divorcing his mom and it's the kid's fault. He did that. He filmed that. And no one's talking about it. But this next one really, really angers me. And frankly, it just kind of makes all of YouTube look bad. I don't know if I have the strength to say this next story. Because this is where it gets really dark. This, of course, was when Jimbo Lips was caught putting Sprite in their water cup. Thievery, plain and simple. Okay, so like, again, okay. And yes, he may it. be banned. I am losing viewers watching this video because nobody wants to watch from it. From that Chipotle. <laughs> But what's stopping him from doing it again? Susan, children watch his videos. I don't know how you sleep at night. I certainly don't. <laughs> and just yesterday, did you hear about this? Yesterday, Jimbo Lips was caught apologizing with honesty and holding themselves accountable for what they did wrong. That's not how you apologize on YouTube. You don't apologize for your actions, you apologize for people. Okay, first of all, Cedric, I'm sorry, that's the funniest sentence I've ever read. Well, it's more than simply introspection, but yes, introspection is not simple. <laughs> this is why people on the internet always say, like, I'm introspective. Yes, everyone is, like, self-aware and introspective to a degree. And this is why I created, like, a level system for it, because introspection is literally the key to everything. It's just everyone always thinks it's, it's simple. There's nothing simple about introspection. If you're introspective, you transform your whole life. If you're, trans like, introspective, you literally, like, change as a person you change your literal beliefs about the world right introspection is incredibly deep it just depends on how how deep you go you also said i think it's essential for chat not to circle jerk every opinion of a content creator uh, makes it's a it is healthy to challenge beliefs with open dialogue i mean that's what we're literally doing but remember that we're starting off listening to a guy with five million subscribers complain that he's not getting enough, what, viewership? Like, again, his content doesn't make sense to me. People getting offended. You say, I'm sorry you felt that way, and you make them feel wrong. He can't keep getting away with it. Oh my God, I just remembered the most recent thing Jimbo Lips did. Yeah, we also don't like to victimize on this channel. We don't, we like to give pe like people a chance to tell their side, hence bubbles. But obviously, like, oh my God, what are we watching this for? Um. We are watching it because Raider's Cat said, well, we should watch it before we judge. Ugh. Three minutes ago, <laughs> he got caught eating their Chipotle before saying thanks to the big man upstairs. Are we really going to allow that? <laughs> Imagine slamming down a wonderful, bountiful Chipotle meal before thanking the big man upstairs. <sighs> and you also have to point and look up when you say that. And Jimbo Lips didn't do that. I'm starting a petition and I hope to get 5 million signatures to ban Jimbo Lips so that President Joe Biden can finally do something. I almost don't want to say this next thing, but it has to be said. Jimbo Lips, that demon, was recently caught for reposting their TikTok videos on YouTube just for views. And he didn't even bother to remove the TikTok logo. And he just keeps getting away with it. If you're still here with me, buckle up, because here it comes. The number one reason why we need to deplatform Jimbo Lips was when he got caught for wearing a YOLO t-shirt to a Make-A-Wish event. Tasteless. You will not be- Who is this for? I want to know his demographics. Remembered fondly. Oh, thank God, that's the last one. If you want to help me remove Jimbo Lips from YouTube forever, please subscribe and join my army of right- She's, he's complaining, uh, wait, he's complaining she's monetizing other people's content just because it doesn't bother you doesn't make it right. Yeah, but just because it bothers him doesn't make it right. Just because he's upset doesn't make it right. We all do it. The news does it. Reality TV shows do it. Gossip columns do it. Newspapers do it. That's what we do. We make livings off commenting on other people's stuff. That's literally what the whole world does. 
everyone is building their empires off commenting on other people's things. Literally, that's called the news. So again, I don't know what y'all are talking about. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know how you all, like, people could feel mad. But okay, let's go. Let's bubble hop into this. So now let's go to... Okay, wait, this, okay, Jack's Films. Okay, let's go to his In thing. 2017, I made this. Pause, let's go to channels. Okay, so now this is the parody only one channel he did to make fun of Sniper Wolf, right? So um, this one's from 10 days ago. This is your brain on Sniper Wolf. Okay, let's watch that one 12 days We're ago. We're gonna start off with a few rounds, a few games of regular bingo. I think I wanna start with, uh, with people who didn't get what they expected. Oh, I wait, let's. Let me share the link everywhere so nobody gets mad at me because apparently everyone gets bitchy. So am I supposed to just link his channel? What would be more ethical, guys? Do I have to link every video I watch or do I just have to link his channel and people can go find the videos? According to Jack's bubble and his ethics, which I do not agree with, do I see in Britney world, just like, just like I love Asmund Gold's take around this whole thing too. Like me too. But um, again, like, so am I supposed to link his channel or do I have to link every video I watch today? Because for me, I'm like, just link the channel. But are, is Jack somebody who would say like, link every single video you watch today? Because you know, no one in my audience is going to go click on all 12 videos, my bro. You know? I, I'll bet Sniper Wolf didn't expect to remove so many clips and, um, you know, videos as of late. I bet she never expected creators to like rise up and be like, hey, stop stealing, you know? We did it, I'll Joe. bet she never expected that. Sniper Wolf, take it away. Did. Starts, man, she, and she wastes no time with the steal. All right, one of my all time favorite uh, TikTokers, if it isn't sleazy, if you're looking for the sleaziest content on TikTok, <laughs> Maybe it's on Sleazy's account. Link below. Now, Detective Creditor says they're a freebooter. Oh, no. Are you telling me Sniper Wolf is stealing from a freebooter? But she would... See, I think this is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. Like, all TikTok does is, like, take... I don't... Okay, you know those TikToks you see? Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm just not too... I'm not normal enough for this, I guess. But you know when you go on TikTok and people are like, hey, make sure you credit who this video, like this is my video, like credit me. I would never think to do that. And I'm bad at the YouTube game because I don't care about becoming famous at all. Like I don't care. As long as I can make my living, like I'm good to go and I make a really good living, literally not caring. So therefore I will continue to not care. But I see those videos on, I see those comments on TikTok and I automatically like hate the TikToker. It just makes me feel weird. Like, oh my God, chill, bro. Like if people want to find your video, they'll go look for it. But if nobody cares about you, they're not going to subscribe to your channel, whether they find your original channel or not. You know what I mean? So in my head, when I see the TikTok video that's been like, quote unquote, uploaded by somebody else, stolen, that's just like what it is. Um, I'm like, cool. If I, if I want to know more about the TikToker, I'll go find them myself. But when I see them comment and they're like, hey, this was my video, for some reason, it's fine if you do it. I'm not judging you. Like, go for it, girl. Get your credit. I don't like it. There's something about it where I'm like, I don't get it. Like, I, I mean, I don't think it's wrong. I get it from like a I want to be popular perspective. But I, for some reason, like for me, Brittany, like I just don't care. But it's nice that you care. I'm not trying to like – shit on everybody who cares about their career. Like, look, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be famous here. So for me, I don't think about getting, like, I don't think about it. But for other people, right? You know what I mean? I I wonder if you care though, because you actually see some difference in your analytics or if you care because you think it matters. It just comes off really insecure to me. Again, I take the Mr. Beast model of things, which is like, yep, share my videos, share them, take them, make them funny, make them popular. Because Mr. Beast's method is like, if they see me and they want more of me, they'll find me. You know what I mean? Not everyone has the privilege of living with people constantly ripping their stuff and not crediting. But that's the thing. It's not like I have millions of dollars. I live paycheck to paycheck like everybody else, right? But that's the thing is I take the Mr. Beast method. Like his method is like, yeah, like eventually people will know who you are and it won't matter if people credit you. Could you imagine being like Mr. Beast and being like, hey, did you credit me for my video? Do you get what I'm saying? Small content creators, like they have to make a decision. Okay, do they want to be known as the people who constantly complain 
or the people that are like, yeah, post my stuff. I love it. That's so optimistic because you know it's a negative, right? You're sending negative vibes out to the universe. Like people are going to be weary of using your stuff. People are going to be concerned. Oh my God, is this person going to come for me one day if I use their stuff? But if you have like a Papa God who's like, yeah, react to my shit, react to my shit. And I have a me, react to my shit, do it. Do you know what? We're encouraged. We're saying it's optimistic to associate yourself with me. We're saying we're safe. We want you to use our stuff. But if you don't, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like you're sending out a counterintuitive message maybe. Mr. Beast has a bazillion dollars. Yeah, but he didn't at some point, right? Like he didn't. That's the point. Like he didn't at some point. So you can do whatever you think is right. But as a content creator myself, I'm just letting you know. I think it is better to be optimistic and send positive views out to people and say, my content's good to react to. You're not going to get in trouble if you do it. But if I hear from other content creators like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go after you. If you don't do it exactly the way I like it, I'm never going to react to your stuff. Period. Right? For me, I think crediting is good for uh, giving viewers the option and agency if they want. But I think that's just better optimization for the whole collective, not just some objective moral standard. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Question. If all the vids of smaller content creators are so bad that no one would watch them, wait, why would bigger content creators make millions watching them even without commentary? Because just the view count, right? So even if a video is like, wait, let me make sure I understood that comment correctly. My dyslexia is not getting in the way of the videos. Smaller were so bad that no one would watch them. It's not that they're so bad nobody would watch them. It's just that people are watching Sniper Wolf for Sniper Wolf's reaction to content they're not watching sniper wolf or they're not just watching sniper wolf to watch the tiktoks they could watch the tiktok without her they want to watch the same boring tiktoks with her they don't care about watching them on their own there are videos i never would watch on my own but if papa gut makes a video to it i'll watch it because papa gut is commenting on it even if it's just like what crazy who what even if Papa Gut is giving no commentary and he's just making funny sounds, which he often does, I just, yeah, but he gives tons of content or uh, commentary as well, obviously. So again, I just think like, okay. So again, everything is good. Everything is great. I love everything about everyone's perspective, right? Like you do you, whatever makes you happy. I just think people are pretending they have an objective moral ground here when they don't, right? Moral higher ground. You know, they're watching Sniper Wolf for Sniper Wolf and they're watching bare minimum Sniper Wolf. They don't want her commentary on Hamas and Israel. They want her to react to dumb TikToks and go, what? Crazy. That Pepsi's frozen. That's what they want. In the same way you watch AI girls go, mmm, so good, powerful woman. Ha ha ha. Like, what the fuck is that? Whatever the audience wants, bro. Whatever the audience wants. That's what it is never do that she's never done that before oh wait a minute she absolutely has hundreds of if he's upset about the lack of credit or if, okay olivia you're saying it's just frustrating for britney to say he's envious because he he she is making money well he literally said youtube is sending a bad message to the content creators that original content shouldn't be pushed right why is he upset why does that matter right okay you said um, when he clearly said it's he's mad about lack of credit and not following fair use. I think it's fair use. I think it makes sense. If it wasn't, something would have happened by now. And if something needs to happen, then the right people will do it, right? But to think that YouTube, right, isn't coming down on one of their hardest contributors. Like if she is breaking the law this bad and she's this famous, then something will come about from this or not, right? But like this, I think... Let me rephrase it this way. We should make it a rule that content like Sniper Wolves should be allowed to exist on the internet. That's my stance. My stance is that I want to live in a world, personally, you don't have to agree with me, where Sniper Wolf gets to be on the internet, but not doxing people. I'm not pro-doxing, anti-doxing, never dox. Doxing is unethical, very bad. In my bubble, it's bad. In my values, it's bad. Doxing is never good. Where I come from, no doxing, okay? But her React content, I believe should be under fair use. It should be valid. I think she should be able to make content like that. And then whether or not she needs to give credit to the original content creators, I'm also indifferent to. I think it's good practice as a community member, but I don't think it really matters. Like, I don't think it's some like end all be all thing. Remember, we're all going to die and no one's going to remember your fucking YouTube video. 
No one's going to remember your TikTok. We're all going to die one day. No one's going to remember. So again, for me, I'm happy to follow the rules, whatever that is. Just tell me what they are and make sure I understand them and I'll follow them. But again, I think if he was just upset at those things, he wouldn't go for Sniper Wolf. He'd go for the system that allows Sniper Wolf to exist in it. Why are you mad at somebody for making money and getting her bag in a world that's like a total construct anyways? All these are made up rules. We made them up. Again, like... Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm not much of a rule follower if I can get away with it. But also I follow rules if it like matters when it comes to my job or like, do you guys ever like, like go five minutes, five miles over on the speed limit? Like that's you breaking the law, right? Like you break rules. Have you guys ever like, um, I don't know, um, I'm just, I clocked in to work and then gone to the bathroom? That's breaking the law. Like, so I don't, again, like I don't know or it's breaking the rules of your company. Like every, humans are doing it every day. We break rules all the time. So don't tell me this is about the rules. Everyone breaks rules. It just depends on what rules are we going to be okay breaking. Maybe the rules should change. I just think they should change in a way that allows Sniper Wolf to exist, except for the doxing part. That's never okay, right? Kay says, do you think people will get this worked up over daily dose of internet? That's, that's what I'm saying. Literally. What? What? And hundreds of times. All right. Well, we have a space on our bingo cards just for that, don't we? It's called free booting a free booted video. It's not okay, turning so on, and it's actually PC. really cool how it opens. That's like textbook talking over someone as they talk. Straight up talking over someone. Talk. No. No, I don't have it. What opens up because yeah, it opens it up. up like this. <laughs> it's almost saying, repeating what they say, but louder. Cool how it opens up because yeah, it opens it up. up like this, like inside. a cool book, right? <laughs> Just wondering if a, if a creator read it out an entire book someone else had written on stream, would you see that as fair game too? I don't want, I don't want to fully disagree, by the way. Just curious. Yes, actually, I think that's okay. I listen to audiobooks on YouTube if they're posted, and I think that's fine. I do. Yeah. I actually, because look, here's my belief system about people. If you want my honest opinion as a content creator and somebody who like has written books and like wants to write books and like I haven't written books in a real way, but you know, I've always wanted to be a writer. I am fine with people sharing my book and doing their thing and giving it to free because like the world's expensive and I'm happy for people who can't afford it to get access to it. And at the same time, people who can pay for it, I'd appreciate it if you would support the work, right? So for me as a content creator and for somebody who listens to like audiobooks, if I can get them for free, obviously, or I can pay for stuff if they need to be paid for because I want to support the content creator. But I'm more of the belief system of like support the content creators you believe in right? So pay for stuff. But I don't think it's necessarily unethical if somebody like reads the audiobook on a YouTube video. Like if I wrote a book and somebody did that, I don't think that I would care. I can't imagine caring because again, the people who are going to watch the YouTube video and aren't going to buy my book, were never going to buy my book. Like I mean this in the nicest way possible. They were never going to buy the book, right? The people who are going to buy the book will buy the book. And I don't want to force people to buy my book. If you don't think my book is worth it, that you want to support my content, if you don't think my content is worth it, that you want to pay for stuff, then I'm failing as a producer of content or something is going wrong because every, there will always be people pirating. There will always be people who take your content for free. There will always be people who share my OnlyFans on the internet. If you believe in my work and you want to keep it going, you will pay for it. And if you don't, then you don't, right? Like I don't go out, you know what I mean? Like Again, same thing. My OnlyFans has been leaked. I just think that like that's publicity. People sign up more because it gets leaked and people like what they see. So they sign up for more content, which is great because when you sign up for more content, I make more content. Right? So I don't know. Like in my in my perspective, I as a consciousness wouldn't care, but I understand why other people would care. Right? I think that's totally fine to care. I'm not saying you shouldn't care. I'm just saying that for me, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not one of those people who care, but it's interesting. And I'm just giving you a different perspective. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to do any of that. I'm just saying from my perspective, I find this interesting and different. You know what I mean? Like, again, I'm I'm not saying you have to agree. Like, I'm just saying from my perspective, when I think about constructing my perfect bubble or my perfect society, you know what I mean? 
People don't get worked up over Daily Dose because he gives credit. Yeah, like I've been doing the Asmongold version where Asmongold just links the video in his chat and stuff. So that's what I've been doing to make sure that I'm keeping up with it. But again, that wasn't natural to me as a content creator. Like I need to, I just want to be very human about this conversation because I think people are making a lot of assumptions. It was not natural to me to link all the 10 TikToks I watched in the video. It wasn't, it didn't even occur to me to do that. It occurred to me to link one or two videos, like if I was referencing something or maybe a news article, but I was thinking about it for my audience. I was like, oh, my audience will want to read this. I, I don't have, my brain doesn't, didn't actually think of it outside of that. So I'm just giving a different perspective to let people know not everyone is a villain. Some people are just not thinking about it because it's important to you doesn't mean it's important to other people, right? So it's good. I'm happy to link videos. That's not the problem. The problem is people villainizing people as if they're thinking about it. And I'm saying to them, they're probably just not thinking about it, right? The author isn't credited in those audiobooks. Well, I mean, they, they, they would be, like their name would be in the title in that way, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Here's here's my only hesitancy to give you that space. She is very much repeating what they're saying. She's not saying it louder though. It's rare. Give us. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? It's so rare. I'm gonna give it to you too. Repeating what someone says. Let's go. Oh, look at that. Apparently, we have an original from the bomb 602. This is from Minyos. I'm gonna detective that shit right now. This is allegedly the uh, the original person, the bomb tech, the bomb 602. So we're trying to find um, a video with like a jillion views. Oh, this looks like it. That looks, this is probably the f uh. video. It's heavily cropped. What a terrible crop. Compare that to this. Yeah. Oh, Sniper Wolf. Stop cropping. Gosh, darn it. Boop. Cool book, right? I'm sorry. I would never get through this video. Can Like my brain does not care about this at all. That's what I mean. Like, it's okay to care about this and make this your life. But at the same time, like, girl, go meditate, go masturbate, go eat, go do anything else with your life. Put out something optimistic. Like, go, like, go fight with your wife and have makeup sex. Don't do that. That's so toxic. But you know what I mean? Like, there's just something about this that is so boring to me, but also, like, good for you. I just wanted to hop into this bubble with you guys because I was just so, like, this is not what I could imagine caring about. He made a whole channel about her. Guys, if I made a whole channel about someone, it would be obsessive. Like, think about how creepy that is. You made a whole channel about someone. Is she like a PDF file? Is she like murdering people? Is she assaulting people? Like, do you get what I'm saying? I just don't understand. Like, this is so weird. Like, this is just something about it that is so strange. But it's fine. Like, you do you. I don't like I don't like you do you. Right. Mommy, can we please see something else? This is so boring. Yes. Discord. We'll switch topics. Okay. So anyways, this was it. I'm not, I'm, I can't watch this. My audience doesn't care about this. Like we literally just think it's petty and he feels weird to us. So why don't we watch this instead, which is kind of on the same topic matter, but this is about Hassan Piker, Jinx, and other issues of reaction content. Apparently this video is really good and my Discord uh, linked it, right? And apparently uh, some people even have a problem with how Hassan reacts. Like again, I don't care. Again, people will tell me, they're like, oh my gosh, Brittany, like, I can't stand Hassan. He just eats food. He like walks away from the stream. So isn't that good? He literally is letting you play in his background. Like, okay, she is not a PDF file from everything that I've seen. If you guys are talking about those twerking videos, like families were all twerking during COVID, okay? Like together. Twerking is not exactly automatically sexual. I don't know anything about it though. All I know is from what I saw from Papa Gut. Didn't seem like that. I don't know. Didn't seem, it seemed confusing. A PDF is a very big accusation, and I think a lot of people on the internet make it way too quickly because it means prepubescent children. So unless Sniper Wolf has some videos with prepubescent children, she is not a PDF file, okay? So I know the internet likes to misuse words and freak out and get all virtue signally, but unless Sniper Wolf has a literal connection to prepubescent children, okay? Like, I don't want to hear it. Considering how many adults go on a Meggle and mess with children, I'm not sure what the rules are. Frankly, I don't do a Meggle because there are children on it and it freaks me out. And like, I don't interact with child audiences. My audience is an adult audience. So I don't know what y'all are talking about necessarily. Think she was offering to flash 11 year olds. Was she? Because like, I don't know that for a fact. I'm not going to look it up. I'm not going to put that in my search. <laughs> so yeah. 
She is crazy, by the way. I am not a fan of Sniper Wolf. She is, she's not a person that I would trust. I want to say that again. I am not a fan of Sniper Wolf. I would not trust her. I would not be friends with her. I'm not interested in talking to her. I mean, maybe talking to her for content. But just for the record, I am not defending Sniper Wolf, right? Like, I think she's unhinged sometimes. I think doxing is so bad. I think, you know, she's got a previous record where she may or may not have grown up from. Um, but I am not. Okay? Like, I am not a fan of Sniper Wolf. I am not defending Sniper Wolf. Again, not a fan of hers. I just don't think Jack has the moral high ground here. And I think they deserve each other. <laughs> That's what I really think. I think they deserve each other. Okay. Now, let's watch this video. This is from JXC. This is Hassan Piker, Jinx, and the issues of reaction content. Apparently, you guys said it was pretty good. So I think we should just jump into it. It was for quite a while. It seemed like it was... In November of 2020, I posted a 14-minute YouTube video in which I roast a weird house. It was, when I first released it, one of my worst performing videos for quite a while. It seemed like it was just gonna end up being one of those videos that didn't get seen by that many people, and that's absolutely fine, you know? That is, until completely out of the blue, it was given a huge amount of extra exposure by an absolute legend. I'd never met this person, in fact, I didn't even know they existed before this, but the boost that they gave me almost doubled the video's view count in just a few days. And for that, I would genuinely like to thank the Reddit user who posted my video to r slash videos. You did me an absolute solid. This kind of thing is genuinely really helpful. Anyway, today we're talking about reaction content. Chances are you probably know plenty of creators who react and respond to the work of other creators. And oh, hold on. Let me link this video in the chat. Hell, that's something I do plenty. For anyone who doesn't know, I actually started out as a response YouTuber. Be it in a stream or in a fully edited video, I've reacted and responded to a lot of other people's videos in my time. Here's a clip from one of those videos so you can see the kind of thing I do. Dip your balls into Basco sauce. Now, when I cover other people's work like this, there are a few kinds of etiquette that I feel it's important to stick to. Basically, don't take the piss. In a reaction video, the reactor should still be adding stuff and creating content of their own, otherwise what's the point of watching their reaction over the original video? The content that the reactor creates should be at least different enough from the original work that they have created something of their own. For example, take a look at this video from Soot House. This is 10 uplifting stories, the video is a minute long, these stories <laughs> wow. are gonna move. Matthew Santoro's really <laughs> fell off. <laughs> <laughs> The idea of a minute long 10 uplifting story is just like dogs good <laughs> number nine. Uh I'm already lost on this video. Fuck, this is so not my corner of the internet. I say I'll use baby shoes. In their reaction to this weird okay. little 10 uplifting stories video, they add their own jokes and commentary. Even okay. if you'd already seen the video they were reacting to, you'd have plenty to gain from watching their reaction. Mm -hmm. It's a different piece of content now. Here we go. Oh, wasting time. Oh! <laughs> what a story! <laughs> this is the story. This is what they're doing. Uh, great story, Mark. <laughs> Do they kill themselves? Soot House is exceptional, and the whole cast clearly all understand that reaction content is something that it requires effort to do properly. Now, their particular style is by no means the only way to do reaction content. It's a very diverse medium. War Flail versus Katana, or Shinai in this case. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I wanted to give you my first hand impression, reaction. Here's some reaction content from Scalagrim, a YouTuber who creates content about swords and other cool. medieval weapons. He often reacts to other people's content, using it as a springboard from which to add his own insight, Same. opinions, and comments. That's what we do here. Commentary. He actually defended against it and caught the pole with his sword, but because it's a flail, it's like, yep, no, you don't. <laughs> just whips right over top, knocks him in the head. This is one of the the main dangers when facing uh, a war flail. This is another example of excellent reaction content. In terms of what he's actually doing with the content, he has basically nothing in common with Soot House. What these channels do have in common though is that it's clear you're getting something from watching their content that you wouldn't be getting if you just watched the original work. This okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude seems to be quite a bit taller than his opponent, so he already already has the reach advantage. The point is that in reacting, you need to add something. If a reactor hasn't added any- Oh yeah, okay. I was wondering like, 
But still, like, isn't the reaction, okay, I agree that that's what we do on this channel, right? We use these videos as a springboard to talk about philosophy and introspection and bubbles and like, what does it mean to be an independent person and a thinker and all that stuff? So that's what we do on this channel. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But also, remember Tosh and like all those people, and maybe it's just the way that I grew up, but so many people that I grew up watching, like they just made like quippy little jokes and like funniest home videos. And it's not like you're you're getting like a laugh out of it, but that's what Sniper Wolf is doing in my head. She's just making people laugh by repeating what she's seeing and they accept that as the experience. And I think I'm fine with that. I don't, look, it's not my job to judge how people are entertained like you do you. Like I'll judge from my perspective, my values. But again, like I don't get the difference, I suppose, between like people watch Sniper Wolf and they're like, ha, Sniper Wolf reacted. And I'm like, okay. And then they watch Britney and they're like, oh, Britney ranted for 10 minutes. Okay. I like that. Oh, Jack's Films reacted this way. Okay. Like we're all just like consuming content that appeals to us. And Sniper Wolf's audience apparently has more people in it than mine. <laughs> like that's just, that's just the reality. Now, if my video got out to 8 billion people, then I'm sure I'd be, I'd, I'd have had like 15 million subscribers. I'm sure it would, but nobody, it doesn't work that way. The, the more popular you get depends on how you brand yourself and how you 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 figure out a niche and like well, who's your audience and you know what I mean I just feel like yeah all reaction content I said I, I guess I'm always confused on what's commentary content what's reaction content what's this what's this what's this but what's the difference from Kai or anybody else just yelling like I speed or anybody else, which I like, I like that too. I like boys yelling too. I like all of it. Just like be loud, be a, do whatever you want. This is life. We're all going to die. Enjoy yourselves, kids. Like I say, enjoy yourself, right? Like how can I be cranky over somebody else? Just like vibing like you do you. So a part of me is like, I don't know. I don't know. It's all just I don't know. anything and watching their reaction is basically just the same experience as watching whatever they're reacting to. Then essentially they're just reposting something someone else made to their audience, reaping the rewards of someone else's work under the guise of reacting to it. Now, the wider YouTube community already went through all of this a few years ago. As a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> as a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance that you remember Jinx. Peaking in popularity around 2015, Jinx made a big splash on YouTube with his reaction videos. With someone else's work always playing in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, Jinx's whole thing was to just sit- Yo, Jinx has amazing skin, bro. I need his routine, there, please. Pretty much entirely vacuously, hardly saying anything, sometimes soy facing or laughing, as he plays the videos he's reacting to in full. Let's take a look at his reaction to the official compilation of the full Astaf movie series. This compilation is 14 minutes long and contains all eight episodes of Astaf movie that were out back when it was released. The Astaf movie series represents a huge amount of work spearheaded by the series creator. Okay, 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 MMM. I think it's because you talk about a completely new topic from the initial content. Even Tosh added jokes. I don't really find it personally um, uh, personality or transformative nature from SS Sniper Wolf. Okay. Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. In my opinion. Okay. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. If I watch, if somebody had a shtick where they never spoke one word while watching a video, but that was the shtick because their vibe was so funny that it was like, I could see that being very entertaining to so many people. Like, so in my head, you, you could, I, again, I want to live in a world. Brittany wants to live in a world where you can sit and react to a video that's on YouTube. That's there. That's for free. Okay. And not say a word. That's what I want to live. That's the world I want to live in. Because again, it's different if it's members videos or behind a paywall. So like example, when Kyla has a members only video, I try not to show those because I don't know what the rules are. If it's a members only video, are you not allowed to react to it even if you're a member and you pay for it? Because I feel like if it's free on the internet, people should be able to sit in a room, play your whole video and just sit there in silence. Or what if we did like a vibe, like a vibe stream where people played it and 
they just chill. Like, okay, you know how we're always upset that music companies won't let people use like music in their videos? Because like if you let us use it in the videos, people will find you. But also on TikTok, Ash Nico talks about this, how yes, her song blew up, but people had a hard time figuring out who sang it. But the dilemma is, is that again, it eventually did lead to her fame, whether she likes it or not. She worked so hard and TikTok blowing up did help. And I remember her saying, like, I'm not a TikTok artist. I'm a real artist. And even she was like upset that it it, it sort of blew up on TikTok. But at the same time, because it blew up on TikTok, people found her. Now, funny enough, I did not find Ash Nico from TikTok. I found her from Oculus. I was playing the Oculus and Oculus had an app. I think it was a YouTube music app. I'm not sure. And it was like featured artists. And I played it and her video came up or her her singing video came up like an acapella or whatever, like a um, live show, live show. And I was like, oh, who's this? And then I went on YouTube and I found her because I was interested enough to find her. So I understand this desire of like, we're not always happy with how we get presented into the world. Like, I'm not always excited when people clip me and make me out to be something I'm not. But like, hey, that's YouTube. What are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Like, it's YouTube. But like, there's something about it where my brain goes, look, if it's for free and it's content, I want to live in an ideal world where like people can make content. That's just like what I want to live in. But if you guys don't want to, that's fine. You know? True, me too, but why can't you in the ideal world also just state the name of the content creators? I don't understand. I mean, you can. It's just in my brain, I don't care. You can't, like I, Brittany, as a consciousness, don't care, but I could understand why you could care and that's fine. But in Brittany's ideal world, you wouldn't need to, like necessarily, like because it would just be known or like somebody could come, like it wouldn't matter, Right. Like maybe it's that maybe because like, again, we're all going to die. So for me, I'm like, I, it doesn't matter. But like it matters if you're playing a different game. But in an ideal world, you wouldn't be having to play the same games. In an ideal world, you wouldn't necessarily need to be fighting for food and water. Right. In an ideal world, we'd have YouTube and we'd all have like a basic income. So like it wouldn't matter. But it could matter if you're playing a different game. I just think it matters to some people because they want the credit for their work. But in my head, like it's like, again, I'm not saying what you value doesn't matter. I'm just saying in Britney's ideal world, again, I don't put it as a priority, right? But I think it's great if you would want it to. In an ideal world, you'd make consuming content because you wanted to. Exactly. Tomska, seen here with me at VidCon 2020. Here's a compilation I put together of everything, everything that Jinx says over the course of his reaction to this compilation. Are you ready? Here we go. What? Really? Wow. What? 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 What the fuck? What the fuck? What the hell? Not the buns. What the hell is this? What the fuck? The Sagada. Oh, again. Those 33 words that it took him 15 seconds to say, 27% of which were what well all he had to contribute is he let the video play for its full 14 minute duration that's all he has to say besides his outro where he sums up his thoughts on the video it's so funny because it's just like the whole thing is just like what and his intro where he explains he's going to be watching the astif movie episodes Great, one it. to eight compilation so a lot of people been requesting this one like back and forth like they like do one through eight like one at a time but it's kind of hard to find each and every one of them like it's kind of hard to i'm sorry to to quote you what did you look for the absolute rest of the time he's just sitting there in silence sometimes laughing or making a facial so again like there's nothing in me that cares about this i'm like okay cool i like content like this like do you guys ever put this content on in the background that's what i do reaction content like this i watch in the background and i'm just like enjoying the vibe as i clean the house so you know, you know, what do you guys think? You know what I mean? Like I, I for me, like this is the content I, I watch in my, like, I don't care about it anyways. You know what I mean? I'm just watching it to watch it. What do you guys think? ...expression. And for this video where Jinx just freeboots someone else's work, adding nothing, he gets 
five million views. I'm not salty. Now, what I'm not doing here is I am definitely not asking you to get mad on Tom Scar's behalf. I don't actually know him. That's that's not how pictures work. But as far as I can tell, he has all the means to easily get this video taken down if that's what he wants. As a large YouTuber, I have the ability to deal with copyright infringement directly. I can either take down people's re-uploads of my videos or I can monetize those videos, basically meaning that, you know, it stays up on their channel, but I make money from ads. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't take down other people's videos. As far as I can tell, Tom is totally yeah, fine same. with this video existing, and that's completely valid of him. The thing is, though, it would also be totally valid of Tom Scott to turn around to Jinx and say, what the fuck are you doing? Can you not just re-upload my work with your face in the corner, please? It would be absolutely reasonable for any YouTuber to have that reaction. And to yeah, okay. I agree with that. I think it is, ugh. I think it is reasonable for them to say, take down my video. But also I think it's reasonable then for people to see you as someone unsafe to make reactions about because you're not sharing in the same way, like in the same way you want to get credited for your video because we're all sharing in the same way you want to make your video available to other people to make content of it because we're all sharing in this space. You react to me, I react to you. We boost our audiences. The reason certain people on YouTube like come together and actually make a lot of views is because they bring their audiences together. Um, think of uh, the people who all played Among Us during COVID. All of them boosted their videos and their audiences by cross connecting and collabing and all making content, right? And so again, I agree that like, let's credit the YouTubers and let's all make videos about each other and let's boost those views. But the reality is, is that it's getting boosted from people watching and then being curious about you. Like I said, I have had the opportunity of collabing with huge YouTubers. I've been on huge channels. And if people don't like your work, they're not going to stay. And that's just the end of it. And like, that's the reality. Most people tell me that like, oh, like I like your stuff, but it's kind of like heavy. And when I re like watch it, I always, like even even my siblings were like, you should make like funny content. You're funny. And I was like, uh, I'm not like funny on YouTube like that though. Like I don't want to make Cody Ko content. I want to watch Cody Ko to turn off my brain. But when I'm at work, I want to think. And so, yeah, even like people who give me feedback are like, oh, I like your content. But it's like, I have to think when I watch you. And that's like a lot. And most people just want to watch YouTube to not think. And so I think it's like, okay, that Sniper Wolf is making lowbrow content because yeah, nobody wants to watch Sniper Wolf and think. What would be worse, living in a world where people are watching Sniper Wolf to think or people are watching Sniper Wolf to turn off their brain? What's a better world? Because I think the turning off your brain one is probably better. Jack's films. That's not an instruction. When Jinx rebooted one of Jack's videos in exactly the same way, Jack snapped back with a video satirizing Jinx's content. Jack's video ends with a series of pertinent, snappy, and to the point criticisms of what Jinx was doing. I really like the part where you played my video in its entirety and then didn't really react to it, just kind of sat there. You added God, I could never imagine being the salty. Guys, I think I'm just too at peace with life. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna credit my introspection to this journey. I'm so happy, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful I can pay my rent. I'm so grateful I can eat food. I'm so grateful I found the love of my life. I'm so grateful my cat loves me. I'm so grateful I have you as an audience. I'm just so fucking grateful. I could never imagine being this salty over someone watching my video and just doing their thing. I'm so grateful to just do this as a job. I'm so grateful. I'm so lucky that I get to do this seven days a week. I am so lucky that this is my life. And if you want to watch one of my videos and sit there and just look cute, you do it, girl. You do it. If you want to watch one of my videos <laughs> and just do your thing, do it, girl. But man, I just like could not imagine getting mad at that guy. Jinx was his name. You do it, Jinx. You do it. You do it. But that's fair, Brit. But you're also unaffected here. Shouldn't people with 5 million subscribers also be unaffected? How am I as a middle class YouTuber being like, yeah, I'm good. Like Jax Films is not a poor YouTuber. He's a rich YouTuber. So like, why is he complaining? Why are big YouTubers complaining? Shouldn't it's OK if small YouTubers are creating or complaining. But why is Jax Films complaining? You know? Like, why is he complaining? Shouldn't he? Are you saying I'm not, I don't, look, I want to be successful on YouTube. I want this to be my job forever. I love YouTube, right? I want to be here forever, right? I, I love being here. 
But like I, so I'm not, I'm unaffected because I, I think it's weird to let it affect you. Like it doesn't make sense, but I'm making enough money. Like why is Jack's films who's famous or like famous on YouTube, big on YouTube. Why is he, what is he losing out on? If I'm making a living and I'm making a fine living, he's making five, six, seven, eight, twenty 20 times my living. You know what I mean? Like what, what is the thing he's mad about? Okay. Renee says you're a mod, but you tear down other people's questions. The chat does not feel welcome to share various points of view. Okay. First of all, leave Ingrid alone. She's the cranky mod. And second of all, you can share your opinion, girl, but we're all very ruthlessly opinionated as well. If you want to share your opinion, this is a safe space to do that. But also we all share our opinions. Ingrid is a little spicy. So just like chalk that up to her personality. Don't get offended. If Ingrid is going to offend you, you got to learn to just radically accept Ingrid for exactly who she is because she's great. She is my mod, but that doesn't mean anything. Mods are not special people on my channel. They're just people who help me out as a content creator, but they're not supposed to be less themselves to the audience. So if she wasn't my mod, she'd be talking to you the same. She is my mod. She gets to talk to you the same. My mods are not obligated to be a fake version of themselves to the audience. So, okay, but... Ingrid is Ingrid. You got to accept her for who she is. Okay. She's my mod because she helps me out. Not because she has to be nicer to you. There's really no insight. But I'm glad you're here, Renee. It means a lot. Pretty brilliant how you play the entire video. She doesn't represent the community. Okay. She represents herself. See, my community is great. We have the best feedback from people. But Ingrid represents herself in your channel it's like it's a one-stop shop why bother going to my channel to watch that video when you can just watch that and your reaction and obviously jack is well within his rights to react this way because there's really no meaningful difference between what jinx did and someone just downloading and then reposting one of jack's videos just because some people are okay with this kind of thing doesn't mean you get to go around doing it to everyone your partner might be really into hard cactus play but before you whip out your favorite acanthosarius tetragonus you're going to check nice. i chose this pick well again like I, I think there's a mistake happening here everyone's doing it to each other so you're saying like don't you understand it's the same thing on different sides all sides are valid no one has the upper hand here about who's right so like i don't care if people do it it's okay for you to care that you do it but both sides are right right Brittany, why are you equating your life needs personal drives and passing huge judgment to someone else's uh desires revolving monetization because i think he's trying to play it like he's coming from some moral high ground when he just wants more money and I think that's funny because so does Sniper Wolf. He's no better than her. This is about money. At the end of the day, this is about money. Going after content creators when you're already like, this is about money. This is not about some moral high ground of like giving people credit. If he went after Jinx for making his content or reacting to it by just like laughing, this is about money and other things. This is, I just call bullshit. I think they're lying to themselves. I think this is a lie. I think they're bullshitting you like most YouTubers are going to do when they're that rich and that popular. I think it's bullshit. I think Jack and Sniper Wolf deserve each other. I'm sorry. Like, I just do. Picture because it looked a bit like a willy. There's a very clear reason that Jinx attracted this kind of backlash with his content, but channels right. like Soot House didn't attract the same kind of backlash with theirs. If a part of your work relies on you uploading other people's content. Hold on. Is this Jinx? Who's Jinx? Why Jinx became the most hated reaction channel? Yeah, I couldn't ever imagine hating this man. But why? What am I missing? Over the past in that time. With react nope. Where's where's like I don't get it. Like why are people so angry at him? I just couldn't imagine being angry at him. I don't content, get it. Then you better make sure that's not all you're doing. Can you be sure it's about money though? If I worked hard on a piece and someone else was showing off pictures of it, I'd be pretty pissy too. Yeah, I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. I don't believe anybody. I don't believe you either. Like, I don't believe anybody. If you want clout and you want views, you want channels to react to you, period. Whether they give you credit or not, they're still getting your face out there. So I just don't believe people. If you If you worked really hard... Um, um, 
if you, okay, you said if I worked hard on an art piece and someone else was showing off the picture of it, I'd be pretty pissy too. But you're not. That's not true. Because like they would have to play it off as their own for you to get mad. But you wouldn't be mad if somebody, if you shared a photo online, guys, hear me out. Nobody would see this content unless you posted it to a public forum. So if somebody took your art that you posted on Twitter and was like, look at this guy's art, isn't it cool? I can understand if you're like, oh, I wish they credited me. But you know, people aren't being villains. They're not super villaining like, <laughs> I'm going to steal this man's art and not give him credit. They're just thinking like, oh, I saw this art that they also probably don't even know where they got it from. They probably just went on the internet and Googled cool art and put it up there. Do you know what I'm saying? So again, like I... I don't think people are being villains. I think people are being very people. Has any of you ever seen, have any of you ever gotten a tattoo of an anime character? You are stealing someone's art. Do you know there are some people that want to copyright tattoo art so you can't get tattoo of anime? There are some people in the world that think you shouldn't be allowed to get anime tattoo because it is someone else's art. I don't want to live in that world. I get that you want to. I don't want to live in that world. Okay. If you want to get a tattoo art, got it. If you want to be an artist, there are people who think you shouldn't do like Sailor Moon art because you didn't create Sailor Moon. But like, I don't want to live in that world. So like you do you. Like, I don't want to live in that world, right? I don't want to live in a world where people can't find their own spin on anime or Sailor Moon or characters. So if you want to do it, that's great. But I'm not going to live in that world. And you know that starts with all of us being somewhat open to people, you know, kind of utilizing our art or you can copyright it you know the great teachers they're uh um the oh my god nerd fighters hank and john green the green brothers said this actually dftba was their slogan don't forget to be awesome and the reason they didn't copyright it was because all of their viewers and fans that had made money off of it over the years wouldn't be able to they'd have to go after everybody like disney did right so they didn't copyright it and target ended up using dftba or a store ended up using TFTB, don't forget to be awesome on their, their pillows. And people were like, that's bullshit. That's your thing. They stole it from you. But hear me out. Listen to me. If the Green Brothers wanted to copyright DFTV so Target and Walmart couldn't use it, then you wouldn't be able to use it. All the viewers, all the fans that made art, made money off of being a part of that community would have to be sued, sued, sued in order for them to hold their copyright and to do what they needed to do. Do you want to live in that world? Right? That's the question. I would like to live in a world where they could, you know, actually work with content creators to help them sell it. But you have to, you know what I mean? Like, again, it's not perfect. The world isn't perfect. It's all rules we've made up. All of this stuff you're upset about is a rule you want to make or someone made up. You know what I mean? Discord says, don't people have to pay to have their stuff in specific platforms or magazines? I think it depends if the person is saying this is mine then there's an issue. Yeah, if someone says this is mine, that's a huge deal, right? So again, okay, we need to have a question about what's the rule we want to make up? Because again, all of this, this is a construct. We made this up. None of this is objective. All of it is like, hey, how do we want the world to look, right? I personally think people who get anime tattoos are lazy. Tribal, all the cliches is pure laziness. All my tattoos came from my brain and creativity. I'm so unique. I'm so unique. Bro, you're going to die and become sand and no one's going to care about your dumb tattoos. I'm so sorry. I'm so happy for you. Me too. I feel that way too. Except no, I don't. It's bullshit. It came from your mind. Oh my God, who fucking cares? You're all going to die and we're all going to be in graves one day. I'm better than people because I created art. Who cares, bro? Where'd that art even come from, bro? Like again, you're putting that value on it and judging people, but who cares? It's, it's like your feelings. It's just your feelings. It's not even who cares. See, I don't value that because that feels shallow to me. Who cares? But then it could feel shallow to you for people to get tribal tattoos. I just think it doesn't matter. It's all a construct. Who fucking care. You're going to be worm food. Your tattoos are going to be eaten up by worms one day. You're going to melt into a cesspool of an oven if, depending on how you want to be killed or not killed, but cremated or not cremated. I just can't handle it. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I can't care. But I feel you, right? Like, you do you. Um... Uh, no, I don't want to live in that world either. But does that not mean you should not give credit to millions of creators? Again, give create con again, Nero, listen to me. Everybody listen to me. Give credit if you think you should give credit. 
If a company wants to make it a rule to give credit, do it. But you are not giving me an objective answer. I am not hearing an objective. We have to give credit to content creators. Why? If some of us don't care, then it must not matter to some of us. It only matters to you, right? So if you're going to say, we should live in a world where we do give credit to content creators, cool. Why? I agree with you. It's better for the all, like the all around good, right? I think that's great. If you think it's like for your community, I think it probably is better. And I agree with you, but we don't all live on the same, in the same communities. Like we're all different on YouTube, right? So again, I think it's awesome. It's just nice. And people, because some people care, right? But some people care about kids being exposed to gay people. I don't care about those people, right? Like, it's not, I agree with you that I want to live in a world where we all like share and get along and link good people and blah, 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 blah. But I just don't think it means anything when people don't do it. I don't think it means you're a villain if you aren't crediting people. And that's the problem is we're saying like some people are, some people are saying it's like very bad. And I'm just like, it's not that bad. It's just like something like credit people move on. You know what I mean? Otherwise you're just re-uploading other people's content it's fine to do that yeah autis on autis be like you guys are both talk like you guys are not i probably understanding tone or something but i'm laughing you guys are cute if you have permission but it's not if you don't so let's take this back to the golden rule how as a react content creator do you avoid taking the piss well, I think that so long as you're clearly trying, it's fine. You don't have to knock it out of the park every time. So long as there's clearly a respect and understanding there that you are working with someone else's content, I think you're good. Hassan Pika is one of the most successful streamers on all of Twitch. His streams are on the long side, generally hitting the eight hour mark. He's wildly successful, generating a huge amount of traffic and revenue. And when I found out that he'd reacted to the video where I just roast a weird house, I got pretty excited. Excited. Mm. I wasn't really familiar with any of Hassan's work, but I have really been enjoying a lot of this modern wave Kipa. of reaction content. Kim. I knew that there are still some jinxes around, but I also knew that Hassan is an accomplished creator who almost certainly knows better than to just- Oh, he left. Okay, so it actually turns out that Hassan will just fairly regularly get up and leave while other people's videos are playing. This isn't what I'm here to prove in this video. This is just a fact. This is something he does. So? You could make a compilation of me sitting around, not even on camera, with a fucking video playing in the background. You could, when you're live for 13 hours a fucking day, of course there's gonna be, of course there's gonna be fucking dead space in between. But it's not the leaving in and of itself that is the issue. The same issue would be present if he was just sat there not saying anything like Jinx was. The getting up and leaving for extended periods of time just goes to show that he doesn't give a shit about even pretending that he's contributing any- What a great world. As an audience, would you prefer that I left a video playing for you while I went to the bathroom and took a 10 minute break? Or would you prefer that I did a BRB, like a BRB screen and music? What would you prefer as an audience? You know, Rush Limbaugh, <laughs> probably in hell, that man was so awful. But I've, you know, I've called into him. I used to be a Republican. You guys know how it was a billion years ago. Rush Limbaugh, for members only, would play parody commercials during his breaks. And that was his way of giving something to his audience. So if you were listening on the radio, you would hear commercial breaks. If you were listening on his memberships only streams, you'd be hearing parody specific commercials he made for his audience to be entertained. And some of them were really funny. Everyone has a different vibe. I sometimes feel bad when I do a BRB stream, um, but also my numbers go way down. So if you guys don't know this, for audience retention, most audiences will bounce when the audience, the content creator is taking a break and then they'll come back when we come back. So for some people, they like to leave the stream running so the audience doesn't leave the stream right? So as a business move, it's much better. And then at the same time, I also kind of feel bad when I leave you guys on the BRB screen and I'm like, oh my God, I got to go back. They're going to get like, I get anxiety over like leaving you guys, you know? And then I remind myself that like, you guys don't really care, but it is interesting for a streamer's perspective, what's better for business. 
like it, it is interesting. Like I almost thought about creating like videos for you to watch while I'm on break. So my viewer retention stays because it's true. Like it's better for my business if you guys stay when I'm on breaks than if you go because you might not come back. So as a business, I'm not sure if I should create little mini videos for you guys to watch, right? Because like that's that's just like as a like a a person creating content, that's like a funny little thing that I have to think about. Like, do I have to do that? Should I put in that much effort? And it's like, who should put in that much effort? I, as an audience member, would prefer Hassan walk away and leave the video going. But also, I don't care as a content creator if Hassan leaves my video and isn't reacting to it. So that's the thing. You know what I mean? You could shout out other channels. Well, are those channels going to get mad at me if I play their video and I'm not there? Like, so then I'd have to get special permission from them. But what if we fight in the future and they decide Britney's a bitch and I don't like her anymore? And it's like, that's the thing is like, I don't know who's safe to work with. Like, who isn't going to get mad? Like, you know what I mean? Get a cam and place it in front of wherever Indiana sleeps. Oh, I love that. I wish. Yeah, maybe. So anyways. Stuff like that is very interesting to me. So I personally feel like this is too stressful for everybody and everybody should chill. Like everybody should chill. Like leave, leave, let Hassan leave. Who cares? Like let people look at your stream and just react with a smile. I just feel like why do you matter? Why does it matter except money? Which is fair. Say it. Say I want my bag. You don't really want the credit for your video, right? Like you want the money. I just, I cannot... I don't believe you're justifying it as like, I want my bag. I want it as anything more than money, right? It's got to be about money, which is fine. Say it's about money, right? Like, I think this idea that it's not about money is the part that's annoying me. It's about money and that's fine. Say it's about money, right? Which is great. Like, that's a good reason. That's a very good reason. Say you're fucking with my bag, but don't say like, it's unethical. It's immoral. Like, just say you're fucking with my bag, bro right? Like I'm good with that. That's a great reason. Don't fuck with people's bag. You know what I'm saying? But like at the same time, like, you know, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, you don't fucks with people's bag, spreading rumors about them. You don't fucks with people's bag, telling lies about them. But people do that every day for, you know, every day. So it's like, what, is, what do we really care about? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything here but even when he's in the room he's no stranger to just streaming other people's content with his own face in the corner now any content creator he does this to could be entirely okay with it but i know from personal experience that he definitely doesn't bother to check now this certainly isn't the only thing he does hell it's not even the only kind of reaction content that he does but it is something that he does pretty often so Let's talk about it. It's also very much not just him who does this. This particular style of content, other people's, is a growing trend with plenty of popular creators taking part in it. But even video essays, like to me, video essays only exist because you can talk about somebody else. The news only exists because you can talk about somebody else. So yes, you can, like some people might even start having issues with this. That's what I'm saying. So I'm like, uh, uh, like, I'm not really sure at what line we're going to draw this, right? Like, I'm not really sure. And I think that's interesting. There's something here that, again, my job as a content creator is to ask us, why are we really upset about this? Or is this really not just very human? Or, like, why do we value certain things? Like, why do we like gossip columns? Even though a lot of them are lying, the tabloids are a mess. But why do they sell? Why do people love them? Because it's a thrill and it gives us adrenaline. And we love it when people talk about other people. You know what I mean? I think you just lack nuance here because because just because you don't have to give credit every and all times you take something from someone, if you do it all the time, like Sniper, you could start giving credit. Um, I would argue that I have more nuance here because I'm saying everyone is only saying there's one option and I'm saying both options are valid. The nuance is like no one is right. The nuance is anyone is right depending on how they vibe, right? The nuance cannot, you can't say I lack nuance so the nuance is because the nuance is one side. The nuance is both sides can matter. Like I had people literally tell me like, oh, you pause too much during your live shows and I feel like it gets boring. And then some people are like, you talk too much during your live shows. No one is ever happy. The audience is never as happy as like the people who watch. Like, you know what I'm saying? So again, the nuance means we want to look at the gray areas, the multitude of options, right? And I'm saying that's what I want. I want to see everyone understand that like everyone's vibing and we should all stick to our own bubbles. That's why I say bubbles are good. 
stick to our own bubbles so we don't have to step on each other's toes. I made one video in the last seven months with Destiny's picture and name in the title and his audience was like, you're obsessed, you're obsessed. In literally like seven months, I've had one video with his face in, in cause I was talking about Dr. K, right? In Destiny. And his audience was like, you're obsessed. You're basically obsessed with him. They didn't even watch the video. They're like, Britney's spending four hours shitting on Destiny. And I they didn't even watch the video. I was so nice. I mean, I'm critical because I'm critical. But like, okay, like I'm a pretty nice person. But also like I'm critical in the same way that we all are, right? We all think we know what we're talking about. And I'm saying we should all stick to our own little fucking bubbles. And at the same time, like how are people not going to say you can make content creation about somebody, you know? It's just so interesting. Like, again, I don't care. I like the video essayist. I think he's making a point, but it doesn't matter to me. Jinx, from what they showed me of Jinx, like that's more than satisfactory to me as a content creator making reaction content. So I can't even like, I can imagine from their perspective, but I also can't empathize because like, I don't get it. I can sympathize, but I cannot imagine being upset at Jinx for making reaction content like that because like it was good enough for me because I know the audience that would watch it. And that's how I look at it. I look at it more like who's the audience and is there an audience and it does it follow TOS. If YouTube has a problem with it, then YouTube should do something about it. But I think other content creators bullying each other on the internet is weird. I just think it's weird. That's why I think this is so important to talk about. There are currently huge areas of the internet where precedent is being established and reinforced that it's apparently just absolutely fine to post other people's content so long as your face or chair is in the corner as you do it. Now, I don't want to be too quick to judge any of the creators that do that. All I want to do in this video is talk about what I do and don't think is okay and present my arguments as to why. And now because Hassan is our primary example, let's take a look at the reaction he served up to some of my content. And while we're doing it, let's see how he compares to Jinx. 8800 Blue Lick Road is a three bedroom house that you can go on a 3D virtual tour of right now if you're interested in purchasing it. And it's, Great. uh, you know, they say you don't really know someone until you've uh, held hands while taking what? it down. Whoa, this digital fuck. property viewing is one of those things where the longer you stare at the image, the more bizarre things notice. So today I'm going to take you on nice. a sightseeing tour of the oddities. This is literally steak HQ. Hold on. I I'm going to be back in one second. Of 8800 Blue Lick Road. The first three and a half minutes of my video were enjoyed mostly by Hassan's chair and his chat. Although apparently for the duration of this, Hassan was watching the video on his phone, so he can see everything that his chair is seeing. It's not until we're four minutes in, which just to be clear is about a third of the way through the video, that Hassan decides to add his first piece of commentary. I feel like- Yeah, like who cares? This is so weird to care about. Like I couldn't imagine wasting my brain space on it. I don't get it. This guy has 500,000 subscribers. He has like 600 views on this video. Um, yeah, like what is it? What is it about Hassan leaving that's really upsetting? What could it be about? Hassan is giving you like literally uninterrupted advertisement. He's got your video in the video. Like he, he's got the title in the video so they can Google it if they want to find it. Like what could it really be? I just feel like it's a cope. Um, like, what is it? Like, what is really upsetting? I'm not seeing it. I don't get it. So he went away for three minutes to pee. Like, what does it matter? Like, your video is playing on one of the biggest stream platforms ever. I just don't get it. The only logical reason I'd see for being upset is if Hassan not watching directly led to him blowing up. Or Hassan not watching directly. Yeah. For me, the nuance is just because I'm okay with stealing a lollipop does not mean I'm okay with stealing cars. So I don't think... It is that great the sniper does not give credit, but I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I get it. She should definitely give credit, right? Like, do that. She should have a team do it. She should just pay somebody to do it. You know, but I don't think she's obligated to morally find the original videos. That's the problem, guys. Who is she giving credit to? Is she giving it to the TikTok channel she saw the video on? Or is she giving it to the original creator? Is she obligated to go find the original, 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 original creator? Or is she just obligated to be like, hey, I saw this TikTok and I want to talk about it. Like, I don't know what the rules are. Like, what is she obligated to go find? You know what I mean? It's It's got to be like, uh, it, it's got to be, I don't know. 
Like someone who. Yeah, I think it seems cases. It seems like a big jump to assume the popular person watching the unpopular video is stealing views from the video. Yeah, I think that's so weird. Who has a disability or something, right? <sighs> um, I'm not sure what part of this messy, weird house has made Hassan conclude. Hmm. Yes, only a disabled could have caused this. That's what he. I mean, literally. I would say mental health, which is a form of disability, possibly depending on how you count it. But if you're living like this. You're obviously something's going on, sir. Sounds like shut up. Or what kind of disability he could possibly mean? Like, I'm not even sure if he means mental or physical. What the fuck are you talking about? What Put it together. Oh my God, are you that dumb? Put it together. Not dumb, sorry. Without knowledge. Dumb means without, anyways, it doesn't matter. Without knowledge, yeah, like what? That makes total sense to me. That's exactly what I, I would agree with Hassan. Obviously, you have a disability or something. Like, what are you talking about? What's the disability that makes you go, I need to install a toilet next to my fucking toilet? Now, okay. Um. I don't know if that's a real question. Give it to Hassan. This is a more fully formed thought than anything Jinx said while Tom Scar's video was playing. It's also a more fully formed thought than me going, Ugh! But he doesn't elaborate either. This is it. This is his commentary. If he'd began to elaborate on what it was he actually meant by that comment, he might have started approaching having something meaningful to add to my work. He'd also hopefully have made- Sir, you took a house that wasn't even yours and did a video of someone else's- What are we talking about here? That's not even your house. That's someone else's work. They built and you're making money off of the house that's not even your house. What are we talking about? This is so fake. This is so fake outrage. This is such fake outrage. There's no way people care about this and are not the most shallow people I've ever like seen in my whole life. This is so shallow. I'm sorry. This is so silly. You do you. It works. In your bubble, it works. I could not imagine wasting my life on this. Can you imagine being this upset? I'd be like, oh my God, Hassan reacted to my video. Fun. Why are you being grumpy about it, bro? Made it clear that he didn't actually mean most of the things that it sounded like he could have meant by that. I also just really want to know what the fuck he meant. But so far, my video has played uninterrupted for nearly a third of its length, and all Hassan has contributed is going, uh, it's probably a disabled person that did this, which technically is a sentence. He lets the video play for another 45 seconds before eventually adding his second comment. But I like. I wow, 45 seconds. This is literally what people came for XQC for. They're like, he goes 40 seconds without commenting. Oh my God, are you fucking insane? This is what I'm saying. What do you mean he went 40 seconds without commenting? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Guys, there's a whole part of the internet that's like, he hasn't talked for a minute. And I'm like, yeah, he's watching. Like what? Like he's watching. Oh my God, he hasn't talked for literally. They want you to react every 10 seconds. So the community that I've seen that is the largest complainers want commentary every 10 seconds, which some people deliver. And I think it's really fucking annoying. <laughs> but some audiences want that. I don't. I don't want you to comment every 10 seconds. I want you to wait. I, I will never understand why there's two bathrooms side by side. I guess that's like the fucking, the biggest flex you can do is when you have not one, but two fucking side by side bathrooms you know what i mean no not really so the house i was roasting actually does have two side by side <laughs> bathrooms but based on the fact that i haven't shown that yet in the video that he's reacting to and the fact that what i did just show is two side by side toilets my guess is that he's just forgotten the word toilet and is saying bathroom instead of toilet and to be honest no i really don't know what he means by this i'm not sure if it's supposed to be a joke a serious comment or a mix of the two is he trying to say that a flex is normally something extravagant and unnecessary and this is extravagant and unnecessary. I guess we'll go with, I think he technically has added something small here. I'm just not really sure what it was. He then lets the video play completely uninterrupted for another two minutes before eventually he makes a third comment. So it's a, it's a how- See, he let the video play for two minutes and then he eventually makes a comment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like so? Like, again, why are you mad? I don't get it. I'd be like, bro, Hassan reacted to my video. Let's fucking watch this shit. Just like I did with Finster. Finster reacted to my video, didn't finish it. 
commented, got distracted. What am I supposed to do? Finster reacted to my video and I'm so upset. No, how fun. I hope Finster is doing great. I love him and I'm glad that he watched a part of my video. I hope it impacted him positively or neutrally. Great, like he didn't link my channel. Hey, did Finster link my channel when he reacted to it on stream? No, right? I don't think so. Let's find out. Twitch, Finister. Did Finster link my channel? Am I, is he supposed to? Why would I make him do this? That's what I'm saying. Did he link my channel? Why? Why would no, he I... do that? You know what I'm saying? Why would Finster do that? But I'm not gonna, okay, where is it? Which one is it? I don't remember. Oh, fuck. I don't know which one it is. See, it's not like my name's in the title, so I know which one. No, I don't know which one it is. Fuck it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, Finster watched me on stream the other day, and Finster's a much bigger content creator than I am. He has much bigger connections. Am I supposed to complain? Because he didn't put my name in the title and he didn't link my... Who cares? Like, I'm so glad he saw my video. I, I hope he's having a lovely, a lovely day. I'm glad he watched it. I'm glad that I then watched it. Did he mention your name in, in the video title? He mentioned my name because his viewer said Brittany Simon. And so he did mention my name, which is cool. Um, but like his audience hated me. So see how I got like... Guys, his audience did not like me. Some of his audience did. Some of the Finster fans did come to my audience and they liked me and that was great. But his chat did not like me. And that's the point. Even if bigger content creators cover you, that doesn't mean their audiences are going to like you. Right? Like your hope is just that the content creator likes you, not their audience. Though their audience would be great, but it's, you know what I mean? Ugh. Oh, sad. I used to belong to a church, but then the eBay resellers just like made it into their eBay house or something? Is that what it is? He'd been receiving a few messages in chat telling him that this house used to be a church. And here his contribution to my video is to ask, hey, is that true? He then adds his fourth comment, which is about the fact that the house is full of loads of boxes. Having that many boxes just means they could be a streamer, to be honest. Honestly, I really don't know what he means by this one either, but this is the first instance where I feel that I'm just missing the reference. Like, I think it's pretty clear that he's making some kind of joke here. I just don't get it. Now, I think by this point, you probably understand the nature of Hassan's commentary. It's pretty much non-existent. In total, Hassan ended up not even spending two minutes talking as he let my 14 minute video- Yeah, I think I'm in a place of like gratitude. At this point in my life, um, the Link says, the thing is you're glad uh, people watch your video. Um, these people make videos for the sake of clicks, which is fine, but it is in a moral position. That's what I'm saying. I'm in a gratitude position. I am grateful for any chance the content creator and I could make a connection, much more than the audience and I. So my hope is a content creator sees my video so they wanna talk to me, not so I get the clicks on my video necessarily, because again, I make a fine living. I'm fine being middle class. I like my job. I already make money off my audience. My audience supports my work. I'm good. But it would be great to grow. But also for Brittany's sake, I'm interested in making connections with the content creators. So I want to know people. I'm like, oh, I found this interesting. Can you tell me about your life? And then, hey, maybe we'll do a podcast about it. But really, I want my viewers to think like, hey, what is this person thinking? Because we do philosophy on this channel. I'm more interested in like, what do you like as a consciousness, right? So it's like one of those things, you know what I mean? Um, no, but you confuse levels on scale because is it okay that Finster did not credit you because he does not exclusively react to millions of videos, but at some point you can start crediting? Again, it's just, it's just, wait, I don't understand. Because he does not exclusively react to millions of videos, but at some point you can start crediting. I don't understand. It's you're making a it's a subjective preference. I just don't think there's a wrong way or a right way. I don't think you're evil if you don't credit. I don't think you're better than people if you credit. I don't think I just think it's neutral. If you value it, value it. But I just don't think there's an objective value here. Like I just don't think so. And I do credit video links, but um Finster, I don't think linked my video. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know how to find it on Twitch. But it didn't matter. Like, it's not like my, like, my views didn't go up on Finster's video. My views went up on the video I made about him, but then subscribers didn't. My subscribers always go down, but my money goes up. It's very confusing. So again, I think I benefit from people watching. I don't necessarily benefit from like, I don't know. I don't know like what you people want, but I just don't think there's an objective moral stance here. I don't think it's unethical to walk away during a stream. I don't think it's unethical necessarily not to credit the artist. 
I think, again, if you're being malicious, if in your head you're like, I'm not going to credit the artist, that's crazy. But if you're like watching a video like I did with you guys, like, look, guys, okay. In the span of this uh, live show, I've watched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I'm reading them wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I've watched 12 videos that I now have created a, a, a link for. I'm exhausted, but okay, like that's fine, right? I work for free in hopes to make money. That's how YouTube works. You work for free in hopes to make money. So that's fine. Like I'm here for it, okay? So I've already got it. I've got like 12 links here that I've already like gotten. I'm going to share it on the description of the video after I private it and if I make clips. Okay, right? I don't think I'd be a bad person if I didn't do that. Like if you guys rewatch my streams and you're like, did Brittany link the content creator in the link box? Like I don't think it's the biggest deal if I didn't do it. It's nice that I'm going out of my way to do it, right? but it doesn't really matter if I don't go out of my way. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it says anything about the morals of, or ethics of a person if they do it or don't do it. I think it says something of them if they deliberately don't do it, like maliciously don't do it. And I think it says something about them if they are trying to literally not give credit on purpose. But if you're just like watching a video and you're like, la, 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 oh, fun video, guys. And then you don't remember to link it or you don't think to link it, like so. You know what I mean? And I just think there's a lot of assuming that people are like, <laughs> and I just think that's weird. Video play in full. He's very clearly leaning on my video to entertain his audience for him. Yes, just like react, just like you're reacting. What does Jay do? What does this guy do? Hold on. Plot, character, and. Okay. So he just said Hassan is heavily relying on his video to entertain his audience. What does, what kind of content does this guy make? Does he make originals? Viewer discretion is advised. More details can be found in the oh, description. Oh, he makes cartoons? In 2015, after a no. run of three seasons, the adult animated comedy Brickleberry was cancelled by... Com Sir, I am so confused. What is the difference from Hassan relying on other people's content to entertain his audience and you making commentary videos? What is the difference? Again, in my head, if you use other people's content to be a, without other people's content you couldn't be a content creator you're the same in my opinion like i know um because of the xqc drama people were saying like oh my god what if we can't do reaction videos anymore so i already make podcasts of my own content so i'm comfortable if i never can react to another person's content again i'll be fine with it i can still make my work work but what are these people going to do if you make video essay channels about history what are you going to do if you can't talk about history? So I don't really understand people when they say, like, I don't understand people when they say, like, oh, Hassan's relying on my content to, to make content. Sir, what is this? Comedy Central, for reasons about which we can... What is this? To me, it's all the same. My brain, my brain sees it as all the same. It's all the same to me. Him in this situation. This is the downtime he has no choice but to take because of his choice to stream for 13 hours a day. Jinx definitely did worse in the matter of actually adding something to the content, but neither of them have done well at all. Jinx, at the very least, did shout out the original video and put a link to it in his description. Oh my God, what are you complaining for? What this man went, this is what I'm saying. See, see, this is why Jack's films and all of them are bullshitting. L Jinx literally put the original video in the link and they were still unhappy with him. So you're not even going to be happy with people if they do that. That's why I'm saying Jack is lying. Jack is saying this is for money. You know what I mean? So Jack, Jack's films, he went after Sniper Wolf and you guys are all saying, Brittany, you don't understand. It's because he just wants him them to, they want, she wants, he wants them to give credit or whatever. He wants her to give credit. Okay. Well, Jinx did that and Jack's films still had a problem with Jinx. So it's because, oh, fair use. He's not reacting enough to your standard, right? But to me, it's fine. So what's the difference? Kay says, I think when you say what's the difference, some people that don't get what you're, that you're talking about the fundamentals and start getting technical. Yeah, I know, because they're fucking retarded. They're not. They're beautiful people. We're all dumb ourselves. I'm dumb. I'm very stupid. But listen, I am never concerned about the cope. I'm never concerned about the Band-Aid. I'm talking about the root of the problem. We are all existing on earth 
as a construct, bros. We make the rules. And you guys are keeping rules in place that don't benefit people or benefit some people. Your rules will not benefit some people. My rules will not benefit some people. And we have to make a decision about who we're going to benefit. Right? You're going to benefit people like you. and I'm going to benefit people like me. I want people to react to my content. I want people to show my clips around the internet. I want Hassan Piker to react to one of my videos and walk away for 10 minutes. I want XQC to not comment on my videos for 10 minutes at a time for Brittany Simon to get actually one of her thoughts out. I would love that if people would watch my videos without interruption, that'd be fire. And then if they could call me and talk to me about them, that'd be even fucking better. Okay. I want that world, but I'm not going to have that world if you make all these rules Right? Which is fair because in your world, well, you want this and you want it to be fair use and you want, fine. We should change fair use to include making facial expressions. We should make fair use, meaning you just have to have your face in the screen. That's what I would like to see. Like, if you don't like it, that's fine. But it's all subjective, okay? It's all subjective, right? We're all just, okay, it's all subjective. It's even right at the top of his description, so you don't have to click show more to see it. Good stuff. Link to the original video is in the description if you just want to see some random shit. I don't know why I'd want to click it, because you've already shown me literally all of it. See? That's the bullshit part. Why would I want to click it when you've just shown me the whole video? Say, this is why I say they're lying. I'm so good. I'm so fucking good at my job. You're all fucking idiots. I'm so good at my job. The haters are idiots. Listen, why would I want to click on this video when you've already showed me the whole video? I don't know, for more content? Ah, but admit it. Why would I want to click on this video if you already showed it to me? You also don't care about getting more content from the content creator. The point is not to watch the video you just watched. The point is you saying, oh, wait, maybe I like this content creator. I'll watch more of their videos. But you just said it out loud. This bitch just said it out loud. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. Did you hear him self-report, bros? Let's watch it again want to see some random shit. I don't know why I'd want to click it because you've already shown me literally all of it, but at least it's there. By reposting. Exactly. I'm so good at my job, Rose. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking good at my job. Did you not hear this self-report? Why? So they linked it, gave credit to the original person, shouted it out in the video. Why would I want to watch it? I already watched it through you. Um, ma'am? So they could watch more of your content. Oh, but they're not interested in more of your content because the reason they're watching, what's his name? Jinx is because they want to watch a Jinx. They don't want to watch you. That's what I'm trying to explain to people. If people are not interested in your videos, they will not click on the link, even if it's in the description. This guy doing the video complaining just proved my point. He is not interested in more of the content. That's the point. Instead, they want you to minimize the videos Make them short enough so they're almost like a billboard for you to get curious and click on more of the videos, but people still won't do it. I watch Cody Ko watch the button. What is the... Fuck, I'm about to make my whole goddamn point. Give me a million dollars, bitch. Cody Ko made... Makes a meme living on being the button girl. A um, button boy. <laughs> the button boy. He literally makes jokes about like, I'm just watching the button at this point, right? His whole shtick is the button. And what did the button do? They didn't complain. They did throw a bitch fit. Excuse me. They weren't like, oh my gosh, Cody Ko's watching our channel and like no one's going to watch the original. I would never watch the button if it wasn't for Cody. And now I'm subscribed to that channel because Cody made it look so funny. And they recently, so smart, had Cody come on and do the button himself. So instead of bitching and complaining that Cody Ko, a bigger YouTuber, was stealing their content, they're like, Cody, come on our show and do the button. And Cody was like, thank you guys for being so warm towards me. Oh my gosh. Then they made a collaboration of a multitude of videos. And now the button is even bigger because Cody Ko was w welcomed. And like, do you get what I'm saying? Instead of shitting on Cody, they were like, fuck yes, make our videos, make reactions, make reactions. The button is dope. I like the button now more. I subscribe to their channel, cut, because I was like, and Jubilee, I've subscribed to them too because they let people react to their content. Though lately they've been shutting down my streams. I need to get on top of that. So again, that's the point. If you're going to build, you have to build on optimism and sharing. This complaining stuff, ugh, gross. It's so ugly on people. I hate it. Jack needs the level of recognition and level of prestige and the money. I agree, Discord. I agree. You know, 
I I really heavily love the Cody Co model, the Mr. Beast model. I like the yes, share, react. I like how Button and all those people are like react, ab and preach, react. Yes, react. It's like, do you get what I'm saying? Um. Usually when you watch the reactor, you're watching for the reactor, not the react, not exactly the content though. Exactly. If you already like the content, you may watch more of the reactor if they react to that. Exactly. Um, this is like a smoking gun. We can honestly stop this topic here. No, no, no. I need to clip this. I need to make this a video clip. I need all these content creators to watch this video and watch and be like, Brittany Simon's so cranky. Look at the way she's so immoral. And then I'll go viral. And then Jack and I can hash it out. You know what I mean? No, no, no. This is content, bros. All the normies are going to want to watch the, like, they're going to be like, oh, what's this girl saying? I'm going to title it really salacious too. Like, let's be real. Jack Sep Jack's Films, what's his name? Jack Septicai? No, Jack's Films. <laughs> Jack's Films hates uh, Sniper Wolf because he is her. Something like that. I'm going to make it really fun because it's true. Ultimately, we hate in people what we hate in ourselves, which is why I hate nobody because there's nothing about myself that I hate anymore. <laughs> I don't hate anybody. I don't hate Jack. I just think he's being so human. Humans are going to human. You know what I mean? It's just so silly. Like, it's just so, such a funny complaint, right? It's just like, it's not. It's silly, you know? Yeah, no. Putting someone else's work, you remove it from its original context, a context which is controlled by the creator. For example, the latest Astiff movie compilation ends with a merch store shout out and some links to some more of Tom Scar's work. The description is filled with all kinds of links, including links to Tom's other social media and people that- Who fucking cares, bro? Nobody wants to watch your merch, like, or your sponsorships or any of that. Tom wants to credit. And of course, this is a YouTube video- Do you hear that? Oh my God, they're all so money hungry. Everyone's so money fucking hungry. Everyone is money, money hungry. It's fine. Go ahead and do this. But literally, okay, literally, if people want to buy your merch, they're going to have to be your fans. No stranger. Think about this. He's like, oh, what about the merch? Like, No stranger who's watching a reaction channel is going to see the merch of another YouTuber and be like, oh my God, I got to buy that merch. Everybody knows merch sales are very hard for YouTubers because your audience has to buy them. So there are loads of useful buttons under it by default, including a subscribe button, a like button, and a link to the creator's channel. Not only is there loads of really useful stuff here, there's also a dislike button. By reposting someone else's work, you completely change this context. On Jinx's re-upload, most of these links are unavoidably gone, replaced with links that benefit Jinx instead. So it is good of him that of the links he can control, he makes the first one a link to Tomscar's original video. It would be even better of him to not just repost other people's work without permission, but this is the next best thing now again so again i don't want to live in the world where when you post a public video on youtube we're not reacting to it right like that i have to ask your permission to react to it you know what i mean i think that's really not the world i want to live in and again you know with the the D dr john deloney his video his brand his dave ramsey takes down my videos midstream which sucks so i have to record off stream appeal to them and then they release it and let me react to it and that sucks and that's a way of getting permission but it also sucks right and it if honestly again I'm a big fan of like let people use your stuff it gets you out there you know if people again I just I want people to see the benefits of sharing including links but see how we said oh you did this video without permission you're never going to be happy. No matter what someone does, you're never going to be happy. You know, Rayon, Brittany, I'm a longtime fan and I always wondered if you're trans. Well, you can't be that much of a fan. Of course I am. Again, I'm not asking you to get angry on Tom Scar's behalf. I'm not asking you to get angry on my behalf either. I'm doing fine. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to work YouTube as my job. I just don't know if Hassan freebooting my work even impacted me negatively. And if it did, I don't know how severely. I just don't have access to that kind of information. But what I- Oh my God, wait, Discord says, if I were a content creator, I would hate that. I can't even keep up with emails and text messages. Literally, I would be so annoyed. I would be so annoyed if I had to deal with emails and people asking me permission. Just fucking do it. I give you blanket consent. Like, react to my content. Like, I would be so fucking annoyed to get messages in my inbox. Like, Brittany, can I react to your channel? What? Why are you asking me that? 
Like, just do it, bro. Don't waste my time. What you do know is that if by doing this, Hassan had taken literally every future potential viewer from that video, and as a result, it was literally never watched again ever, I would still be doing absolutely fine. I'm not trying to tell you some kind of sub story here about just aren't you though? How hard my life is. If in a shocking twist of character, <laughs> Hassan offered to financially compensate me for the video of mine he freebooted, I wouldn't take his money. However, when when this kind of thing is done completely without permission and without knowing enough about the original creator. Thank you, Yaya, for sticking around even when I cover shit that's boring. Appreciate you, girl. Data, you run the risk of freebooting work from a creator who is struggling, or you could end up freebooting a video that represents months or even years of work on behalf of the creator. I once spent six months working all day, every day, on one single YouTube video, and if Hassan had freebooted that, I would be very pissed off. I would be even more pissed off if I was a creator who genuinely was struggling. Yeah, but like at the end of the day, like I don't get it, right? Because like they're never going to see it. Look, Hassan's audience, why would they ever watch my videos? They, like they just wouldn't. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Like I think maybe, maybe I'm just like so aware that like no one's going to watch it unless someone covers it. And unless somebody's interested in philosophy, you're not going to find my videos unless you're interested in philosophy. You're interested in like some version of introspection. And so the best thing for a content creator that's small like me, my version of small is for Hassan to watch my video. The best thing for him to do is watch my video. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I'm in a different boat where my content is so niche. You know what I mean? What if people were reacting to your OF? Mm. I think because it's behind a paywall, it's different. But I also, like, if my OF gets leaked, it usually brings in more subscribers. So, you know, but I personally think if it's behind a paywall, I wouldn't do it. So, like, my YouTube isn't behind a paywall. It's free. Like, it's free content that YouTube lets me put on the platform. And then it's because it's, I work for free and I hope I make money. Guys, I make videos. I make content. I put my thoughts together. I make podcasts for free. And then I hope I make money off of it. The best thing for somebody like me is exposure. And it doesn't even matter if you say my name, because eventually if people want to know who the big nose girl is in videos, they will find me. You know, I found you through YouTube recommendations. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, that's fun. I love that. Yay. Either financially or in just getting people to my channel to watch the videos that I make. And I would be more <coughs> pissed off if when a reactor freebooted my content, they hadn't even taken the tiniest piece of minimal effort to just acknowledge the original creator in any way. Completely taking the work that they just used to- Oh wait, am I doing the same thing right now? I'm reacting to this whole video on stream right now. Wait, am I doing the same thing? See, should I not be doing this? Or am I transforming it enough because I'm giving context and I'm talking about it? Oh my God. I love you guys are here from Kid and all those other ones. Brittany, Big No, Simon, True. See, I can't, I can't figure it out. So am I doing enough transformative work for this content that I can be watching it right now? I am. I don't know. I feel bad. See, now I feel creepy. Now I feel like, okay, maybe this guy, like I shouldn't ever engage with his content. I'm definitely never going to subscribe. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's like, nope, now this feels weird. Like people are being weird. Like we're all on YouTube. We're all posting for free. We all hope we make money. That's it. We're all doing the same fucking thing. You know what I mean? And the best thing for somebody as small as me is exposure. So entertain their audience for granted, with no thought given to the fact that it was made by another person. Yes, yeah, so this is what Hassan did. For the majority of the time, my name and the video's title aren't on screen. This information is only made visible when his setup requires it to be. He doesn't attempt to share any kind of link to any of my work in any way. He doesn't attempt to give me any credit or shout me out. I don't need him to do literally all of those things, but for him to make no attempt to do absolutely any of them when, without permission, he's freebooting the work of an independent creator he knows absolutely nothing about yes that is yeah i don't care 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 it's nice that he cares i think this is important for him to say that i think it's okay for him to voice this concern i couldn't care hassan put my shit in your streams and you don't even have to say my name do it hassan do it do it manifestation guys link my shit to hassan may he fucking watch my shit and eat cereal how am i not like am i just like it was, uh, and I'm so much smaller than this guy. This guy has five times my audience subscribers. Definitely would never have watched 
this if you weren't reacting? Literally. Like, well, this guy is so salty. I don't know what it is. What am I missing? React to me. Am I just like so small that I'm like, react, bro? Is this guy big enough? Like, if you get too big, does reacting to your content without credit actually do you a disservice? Am I just so small of as a content creator that I'm like, yes, react to me. What? Eat your fucking cereal and watch my video. I fucking, yes, please. What the fuck? Yes, please. Am I crazy? Like, how is this not awesome? It's the entitlement. You can't make money off of anyone making less money, but we can all make money off the other stuff in society. Mm, interesting. It's absolutely taking the fucking piss. And on top of that, okay, I know I said that he played my video in full, but uh, I, I lied to you a little bit. He plays Cool that you don't care, but some people care and that's all there is to it. Right. I just think it's important that they know that they don't have the, like, no, you know, everyone's just doing their thing. You know, like, it doesn't matter. But man, I really wish Hassan would watch my fucking video. It's all of the content of the video, but then right at the end, when I just take 20 seconds to talk about other stuff I'm working on and where you can find it, well, he turns it off before I can say any of that stuff growth industry. That's everything I have for you today. This has just been a very small project on the side as I work on something much bigger. My full critique and breakdown of seasons 11 okay, and I'm gonna 12. I'm going to add you into the call. Yeah, I mean, once again, um, wow, good. I love XQC, no shade. Good job he did that. This was becoming dangerously close to an interaction that would have benefited both of us instead of just him. Even Jinx knew to shout. Yeah, I just feel like they're not. Yeah, okay. Vert says he's, um, he's, uh, no, right. Links, links says, but these people always argue on behalf of the small guy. That's my problem. Am I not the small guy? I get like a few thousand views a video. Like I make a good living because I don't need a lot of money and I chill and I'm like, I'm good. I have like multiple streams of income. I make it work for me, right? But am I not the small guy? Because as a small content creator, I would love if Hassan did this to my video. So why as a small content creator, do I see this as a great business opportunity? And other people who are bigger than me see this as a negative. What is the difference? What am I missing from the business perspective? What am I missing from the business perspective, right? Because as a small content creator, this is like, yes, I want, please react to my shit. What? Oh my God. Yes. Like, that's awesome. Don't even say my name. Just like put my face there so I can react to it later. Guys, listen to me. I just need Hassan to make a video with me in it. And then I'll react to Hassan reacting to my video. And boom, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Like, what are we all complaining about? Right? Like, that's awesome. That's fucking fire. Okay. So like, what is it? Like, what is the difference, right? Um, you know, Miss P says, I was never gonna watch your content if I didn't like it or if there wasn't, if the reactor show. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I get you. They Because they want the attention view for the victim. I don't know. I found Brit through Destiny. Never really liked Destiny's content enough to subscribe though. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but like literally, okay, that's what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to say like, as a small content creator, this would be great. Maybe we are missing the perspective of a mid-tier creator, something I'm missing, girl. Yeah, maybe I'm missing it. Brittany, people will say Brittany today is lying. She's more naive to how things work. I don't know. What's the scope to this drama? I don't know who this person is. Um, It's about Jack's films and Sniper Wolf. And some people on YouTube think you shouldn't be able to react to their content and I'm trying to figure out why, right? Like I'm trying to, like that's basically the argument, right? Because Jinx gave a link, gave a reference and Hassan, like they're saying they want them to make it transformative to their standard. So I'm like, I'm not understanding it, right? K says, it's because you aren't fearful that someone else eating, meaning you can't eat. You don't have the scarcity mindset most creators do. That's true. Oh, I've been poor so much. I've lost all my money. I know I'm okay. Like even if I lost this all, I could always recreate it in a different way. I am not fearful of losing what I've built because like I can't I'm all gonna I'm gonna die I am so grateful that this is my life and I will be grateful for as long as I have it and I don't know how long I'll be alive or how much more time I have but I'm just so grateful for what I have now that I am absolutely I have no attachment obviously like going off what Dr. K says like I don't have this attachment that I think oh okay most people do that makes sense that's fair Okay, it could make sense that people have an attachment that I just can't have because obviously, like, this world is so temporary. Like, we're so lucky. You know what I mean? Like, we're so lucky that this is even our life. And so I couldn't imagine, yeah, being so attached. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay.
out out the video he was reacting to. This is a crazy amount of just taking other people's work for granted. No consideration is given to the fact that the work here was done by someone else. Again, my point here isn't that I desperately want Hassan to shout me out. I don't need that, I don't want that, I am fine. The point is that this is his attitude when making reaction content and he could end up doing this to anyone. The point of this video isn't like a petition to get me the recognition I deserve for my joke about how there are two toilets next to each other. The point of this video is to discuss a certain type of reaction content, the arguments that get used to justify it, and why all of those arguments are bullshit. But where am I gonna get examples of these arguments? Well, when I- Um, the mindset of a creator with less than 100,000 100, subs will definitely be different than the mindset of a creator with 2.5. I don't think so, unless you buy into th that meaning something. Like, like Mr. Beast says, I follow the Mr. Beast model, and Mr. Beast has how many hundred a million subscribers? Hundred million? 100 million. He says, I want people to take my content. He thinks the best method of YouTube is let people react to you, let people take your content, let them cut you, let them get your face everywhere. And he has 100 million. So I take his viewpoint. I take the viewpoint of the content creators that are like, yes, make react, react content to me. Yes, put me on TikTok. Yes, like make fan accounts. Like, yes, do that. Um, that is the best for me. It, that's the best. The best thing for people is like for people to take your content and put it online. Like that you were already going to do it anyways. And now you have people basically doing it for you and they're going to reach their audiences organically and they're going to see that, oh, other people like them. So maybe I'll like them if you have a shtick and a, a person to come back to, right? So again, it's like, it's very interesting, but I think when you attach yourself to money and views in a particular way, like actually, you know, Asmongold started streaming on his own platform because it got complicated with like Twitch and YouTube and stuff. He's like, ah, the chat's got a little too like much. So I watch Asmongold and he's been streaming on his own platform and putting the clips on YouTube. Like at a certain point, you really are just content doing your thing or you're not and you're always chasing the beast. And my thing is like, it sounds like y'all are chasing the beast. And I'm chilling, bro. And I'm chilling and I'm saying you should be chilling because it creates a bad environment for us not to be chilling, not to be like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Hassan covered my video. Instead, it's, I can't believe Hassan covered my video and he didn't even do it in the way I liked. Now you're grumpy. Now I don't like you. And now you're giving me bad vibes, bro. Like your energy is bad vibes. I found out that Hassan had freebooted my content. Similar to Jack's films, I went live to satirize him of 8800 Blue Lick Road. If we start at the entrance, you're greeted by a Minions brand doormat that really no home is complete without. Sure, but I think we might have found the toilet soda culprit. Now, if we go across the hall from the man cave, we'll find ourselves in the second bathroom of the property. Now, that urinal in a residential bathroom is a strange decision. So it's a, it's a house that used to belong to a church, but then- Okay, hold on, great question. Discord says, just wondering, do you gain more subscribers when you collab versus people reacting to your videos? That's how I found you. I'm not sure because not enough people react to my videos. I will say collabs can help, but I will say that I actually don't gain subscribers. My channel always loses subscribers and it's very interesting. It's always happened, but my patrons go up, my streams go up, my money goes up, but like I always get more patrons. I'm really lucky as a content creator, I think I'm really lucky that most people sign up for Patreon because I get most of the revenue from Patreon, though they take their cut. And that's the most dedicated audience. That's the audience that says, I support Britney's content, right? So for me, subscribers are free, which is great. But that only like, the only benefit to subscribers is you can get traditional uh, sponsorships, but sponsorships won't work with channels like mine. So the best thing a viewer can do is like super chat or join Patreon, even for like a dollar, because it makes such a big difference, right? And so for me, like when I do collabs, I don't, I gain more patrons and live show chatters and members. I don't gain more subscribers necessarily, which is pretty funny. Um, it's like really interesting, actually. I'm fascinated by it personally. So I'm really grateful because that means my audience is actually like I have a, I have a great audience. I have the dream audience, which is the audience that actually likes me and my content and my ideas. I'm really lucky. I don't ever have to worry about like, oh, Britney's not making cool content anymore. Like they like Britney and it might not be the content for them at the time they are in their life. But I think like I'll. Uh, it's opt it's more optimistic and positive i think i i that's from my understanding of how my analytics have always gone you know what i mean 
82 subs is great though. It is, but when you're only getting three to 10K views a video, most of those subscribers are people who aren't watching you and forgot you exist. So it doesn't matter to sponsorships if they work with you, they don't care. They care about viewer retention. So it is one of those things where as a YouTuber, like the, for me, again, I, I'm all about my patrons. That's why I do extra things. That's why the Discord has like four to five events per month. That's why I work so hard to give my patrons extra content because I know that they're 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 the ones giving me literal money for my work versus YouTube. If I'm lucky, I get paid. Oh my God, you guys are such sluts. I love it. Thank you so much. Maiden with the super chat of 20 bucks. Thank you so much, girly. That's so sweet. And Cass, our sugar mama of all of our streams, gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Stop. I'll cry on stream. I, I will do it. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are so sweet. I love it. Thank you. Should we make, we, should I make, we should make an emoji that's like <laughs> sluts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We shouldn't. See, that's so bad for branding. That's so bad. <laughs> oh, this is so, oh, thank you. Thank you. I think that is literally why you don't care, Brit. You are selling your brain and you're being a legend, not even just content in a way. Maybe. I will say I have, I know I'm making original content with my own views. So I know I'm not scared if they ever say like, you can't react to content anymore. It's like, okay, I have so much to say. I don't need it. Um, oh, thank you, Seven, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, Jerome, like vibes, but also like, I can't with the Christian bubble today, okay? Um, but yeah, maybe I'm just feeling really grateful because my content is like, I know I, I'm so confident that even if YouTube, because of this whole controversy is like no more reaction content allowed, I'm chilling. You know what I mean? Cause like, okay, I'll just make podcasts and I have so much to talk about. I read books. I can talk about those. Um, like, okay. Like I had a conversation. I can have my, you know, I can make it work. So I think that's probably why I freak out less than these other content creators, but that doesn't make any sense. I guess, but then uh, I guess it does make sense. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. And um, it, eBay resellers just like made it into their eBay house or something. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, you think Donkey ripped you off as well? Uh, yeah, Donkey covered the uh, the same house. The thing is, a few people have covered it, and I wasn't the first one to cover it. I was the first person to do it as a YouTube video. Like a fully edited thing, as far as I know. Who's this guy with the long hair? Is this the same guy we've been watching? I'm sorry, I just, he looks, I don't know who this is. Um, but like a few Twitch streamers went and had a look at it and did live reactions to it. And that's how I found out about it. So maybe- Is this the guy we've been watching the whole time? He found out about it the same way that I did. Maybe he saw my video as well, but you know, he made, he did his own spin on it. He didn't just play my video in full while saying very little um or just not being in the room he made his own video like just to be clear you can react to my content on stream i encourage that please go for it i don't know bro you're giving me a little bit of anxiety about it but react do it in a transformative way where it's reasonable for people to assume that the thing they're there for is you and also yeah but they are like oh this is the disconnect listen to me when i say this this is the disconnect watching hassan eat cereal while watching your video is what people are there for Listen to me right now. This is what people aren't understanding. Hassan eating cereal and not talking. Hassan getting up from his chair and going to the bathroom or whatever and coming back is why people are watching. Hassan has 40,000 streaming people or 100,000 or whatever it is because people want to watch him be normal. They want to watch him go to the bathroom. They want to watch him eat cereal. They want to watch him be himself while having something on in the background, which is, God bless you, your video. That's what people are missing. They are there for Hassan. Like I had a stream dream. This is a stream dream I have. I'm not saying it will ever happen. This is a stream dream I have. I want to do just like a study stream one day where I have vibe music on and vibe lights and we have videos on in the background, but I'm not actually commenting. I'm just taking notes. Total meditative study stream. No talking, no Britney, because maybe we'll, you know, but watching a certain kind of video, but on stream. That is my stream dream. So I can hang out with my audience. So we can vibe together while watching like a philosophy lecture that's like five hours long, but I don't interrupt. But 
now I'm getting feedback from the world that's saying that's bullshit. You're a thief. You're a bad person. And I'm like, see, now I'm confused. Am I allowed to do this or not? See, okay, you guys are down for it, right? It's a vibe. Tell me that's not a vibe. No Britney commentary. Just I'm sitting here with my notebook. I've got a tea, earphone. We're chilling. We're listening. We're all vibing. But now if I do that, am I stealing? Am I? See, you guys want me to do it. But that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't that be such a vibe? Like that but vibe. Now, if I play, um, if I have like the lecture on a small screen and I have other things on the screen, I think, you know what I mean? I'm so down for that. But now I'm paranoid that if I do that, like I was thinking about doing it, guys, I was thinking about doing it like every Friday, like Friday nights or every Thursday or every Wednesday or twice a month. Like I was thinking about it, but I was like, how do I do this without people getting mad at me? You know what I mean? Like, how do I do that? without people getting upset that I'm quote unquote stealing content when I just want to vibe, dude. I just want to vibe. You know what I mean? So again, Miss P says, Brittany, you're the only YouTuber I've ever paid for Patreon for because you're the first YouTuber who I felt like it was worth it to me. Yay. I've been watching YouTube since I was 16. You're doing great, girl. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I really, I appreciate the nice words you guys are saying about the Patreon. I really try to put an effort in. I hope you guys like it. Like I said, we try to do four to five events a month at least. That way people know they're getting more. You know what I mean? And you pay for the content because like you guys make it possible for me to stay home and do this. And so I just appreciate it so much. But that's like I have dreams about, oh, do the meaning crisis. Honestly, I thought about it. Actually, I bet John Vervicki wouldn't mind because I, I've missed some of the videos in the series. I wonder if we could do the whole meaning crisis like on YouTube. See, would John Vervecki, like, would he care? I don't think he'd care. He's a philosophy professor. Like, he doesn't care. And I could put his name on the screen or something. Yeah, like, see, that would be so great. And, like, do, like, a, like, like, I don't know. I have all these dreams, but I'm, like, is the is the world going to get so, so anal about everything that I'm not going to be able to make vibes? You know what I mean? Because people are complaining that Hassan's watching their stream eating cereal. Like, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Like, isn't that what we want? Don't we want people to be vibing to our shit? Like, I don't get it. And now, like, you're not a vibe. Like, now I don't want to fuck with you because now I'm afraid no matter what I do, you're going to be mad at me, right? Because again, the people that are there for Hassan are there to watch him eat cereal while they watch you, while they watch your video, bro. That's the audience. That's why Hassan is such a big streamer. Why are we looking at the biggest streamer and being like, he doesn't know what he's doing. Why are we looking at the guys who are literally killing it? And then we're like, they don't know what they're doing. Well, obviously the audience wants it. You know, obviously the audience wants it. So what are we talking about here? Yeah. Okay. Now here's the thing. It's 12, 17 AM and I got to go to bed. OK, I got a big week this week doing government paperwork. Honestly, at this point, I think we've hashed out the subject. This video still has 30 minutes, so I'm going to link it in the chat if you guys want to finish it on your own. Here, I didn't watch his whole video on stream. I think that's what he wants. I'm also going to link it in the descriptions of my videos. Um, I'll probably clip this stream and make a clip of it so other people can get access to it. Please uh, like that. Put a comment in for the algorithm. Even if you watch the stream live, it really does help. I'm so glad you guys had this conversation with me. Look, I'm really, I'm not trying to pick teams. I'm just saying I want to live in a world where I can vibe out with my audience and we can watch stuff and people know I'm not trying to steal content. I'm just trying to vibe. So, you know, I'll give credit to where credit is due. I'm glad people make content that's, you know, a vibe, even if we're vibing negatively. <laughs> but anyways, really nice spending time with you guys today. I am going to head out. It is winter season. I highly recommend a tomato-based cauliflower soup. That's what I'm having right after this stream. You fry up the tomato paste and garlic. You make it into soup, put some water in it, salt, uh, cayenne, jalapenos, whatever you like in your soup, and then throw in some cauliflower that you've chopped up. Highly, highly recommend for a nice winter soup. And uh, with that said, thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate it. Um, on the Discord, I see you guys. Link me. Um, any channels that you think we could vibe to on stream that wouldn't be upset about it. You know what I mean? That's definitely what I want to look for is I don't want to make people upset. I really don't. I just think like we're looking at this without the optimism and the gratitude that we should be. I would be more than grateful if a huge streamer watched my stuff. Maybe that's just me, but as a small content creator, I need the exposure. So I would be really, really just elated, you know, um, even if they didn't link my video. 
because I'll take it, girl. I'll take the free billboard on uh, Madison Avenue. I'll take it. Okay, guys, with that said, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my God, Seven, thank you for the super chat. Renee said I might be ready for a video call. Thank you for the bright vibe to bring me back down to earth, Brittany. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you very, 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 very soon. Let's get you some music from Elvin, a content creator that I know who's really great. She has a YouTube channel. I linked a page she made just for our audience, us specifically, in the top of the YouTube chat. She's really awesome. If you click it, she made us our own little page for the Britney Simon audience. And it has her Spotify, her YouTube channel, all the good stuff from Elvin. So check her out. This is her literally playing this music. She's playing the instruments. It's She plays the harp. It's Gorge. Let's go, vibes. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.